Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Samantha's here. Butler is here. And let's not waste any time. Let's jump into the entertainment, my friend. Yep. She's going to be at the Orlando Improv, theimprovorlando.com for tickets. Best place to get your tickets for sure. Two shows Saturday, uh, two shows Friday. The 2 2. Do it backwards that time. Uh, Jess Hilarious <laughs> is on the line. How are you doing, Jess? I'm good. How are you, Tom and Dan? Good, good, good. Hey, thank you so much for the time. We appreciate it. We I, we got to have you in one time, right? I think we had you in one time. Yeah. Then the world goes crazy. Everything shuts down. Yeah. You start a podcast. I be, hey, I listened to it this morning. It's good. You got a good ass podcast. Thank you so much. Well, Jess, I was going to mention that last time we talked to you was December of last year, mid pandemic. Uh, things that started to like shows have started to come back. So since the last time we talked to you, uh, have things ramped up to an incredible pace? Because I know what happened with us. Like all of a sudden, we found ourselves like, oh man, it's back. To, you know, yeah. we're back to you know full time, uh, full strength. Yeah, we're doing yeah. it all. Yeah. Yeah. How's it work? Yeah. No, for sure, man. Everything has been like back up and running. I've been filming like crazy. I'm touring now, and I'm still trying to balance doing both because the world for me kind of opened up like very, very quickly. I'm a football mom now. Nice. My son plays football. It's like so much trying to juggle everything. It's a good, it's, it's good overwhelming, but you know, it's just like, it's a lot. And honestly, over the pandemic, I was one of the comedians who never, uh, never stopped touring. It slowed down a lot, but I, I was still gracing stages, man. So I've just been blessed throughout this whole thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, Jess, and I'm not sure if you experienced this, but we kind of did the same thing as far as when even when the pandemic happened, we just kept coming in here. We're a small business and a small podcast, yeah. so we were able to just keep working. So essentially, yeah. we went in to work every day and kept. Obviously, it was slowed down, but it's like we had a little different experience well, than a lot of people yeah. that just their com lives completely change. And there are some people yeah. um, that uh, are still basically keeping away from everybody. And, 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 uh -huh. and you know, two years later. So I'm, I bet you there's been a lot of comedians and stuff that have totally stopped touring or barely tour at all now. Uh, yeah. What's like the landscape like now? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's just like that it's just like that. i know a lot of comedians i'm friends with a lot of them obviously and they're like yo we can't you know they, a lot of them can't sell tickets because more than the world just opening back up people are still scared then you got a new delta variant every freaking day you know every month it's like oh it's, we have covid 2.0 and covid 3.8 and it's like damn yeah, yeah. Je jess i saw an interview uh and you mentioned something that we I asked, and we may have talked to you about it before, but I can't remember because it's super interesting to me. Yeah. Um, and we smoke a lot of weed. I yeah, apologize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I saw an interview, <laughs> and you talked about you used to be a mortician, or at least went to mortician school. And, yeah. And yeah. Th that is super odd to me because... That it, is a skill, man. My dad actually was an assistant at a funeral parlor, a funeral home. And so he did a little bit of that. Like he he was training to do that as well. And, and most people are yeah. scared of that, or definitely don't want to be around corpses. You know, it yeah. seems like. So tell us about how did you even start that? Yo, it's the funniest story. Okay, so I used to have a lot of jobs where, like, like a McDonald's or a Walmart or like Wendy's and stuff yeah. like that, where I always had to be around people, and I never really got along with people. They would always get me fired. They would see me like stealing out of the register and it's like not your money so mind your business <laughs> but anyway people go snitch on me all the time i get fired so i was like my mom's like you're not gonna live in my house and you're not gonna have a job i'm like okay cool so i <laughs> she's like you gotta go to school or get a job i said i'm gonna go to school to be a coroner because you can't get fired dead people can't get you fired you know if they're <laughs> dead they can't talk they can't snitch on you so i did that she said all right cool i'll send you to school went to school up until clinicals, I was great. When I did the embalming process, I put a little bit too much in it, and limbs were still moving. They never seen me again. Like, I, that was it. It was just like, no. Like, I, I oh, I didn't know you could overfill a body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, oh, yeah. Out. yeah, I didn't know you could overfill a body and then make things move. That's insane. To, like, I've overfilled my gas tank before. You, you get a little splash on you or something <laughs> like that, but not a body. Dude. For Je sure, yes. <laughs> Jess, do they, like, 
ease you into it or like they show you pictures? Like, how does it work? Or do they like, because some jobs it's will like just. day one, they pull out a big old dead person. Well, because sometimes they want to. No, no. Yeah, like uh, weed out the so people you, that are too. Uh, uh, yeah, too squeamish. Squeamish to handle it. <laughs> no, they teach you everything that you need to know in class. And then they bring you up. That's like the first like four or five months and they well no the first two three months and then like you're like mid-semester you go and you do your clinicals and that's like where you have to go to a real friend room and you see like how they do it they'll show you but you know i smoked a lot of weed too so i <laughs> end up putting too much embalming fluid and that kind of gives the corpse gas it like they can burp it can still fart like Whoa. it's coming out somewhere and if you and if you put too much in the same hole like the arm will lift and it'll go back down like, I, I just, I wasn't paying attention in that part, maybe. And, like, yeah, they, they never so, saw me after my first So dead people can was, get you fired. The, what the cool thing <laughs> about that. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we're not looking at the positive here of, like, I wouldn't mind having my granny, like, waving at me one last time. <laughs> You know, like maybe, oh my God. maybe we're missing. Like maybe you could. You're a businesswoman. Look, I went to your website. I saw. Is that now the Doctor Who line of fitness apparel? Is that you? Yes, that is me. I have an athletic uh, apparel brand. TC, it's awesome. Like, see, she's smart. Like, she's she's gonna go and you yeah. diversify, right? Kind of like what we have to do to yeah. stay afloat as a small business. You got to go in different directions. So she has this company yeah. called Doctor Who, and it's like athletic wear that you can like. You know, you could use to kind of shape things up and make it look right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Absolutely. And I'm guessing the name is so you don't have to necessarily be cutting on yourself, right? Absolutely. And also, it also came from, because I had, like, my boobs done. I had, like, a little bit of, you know, a little, a little bit of alteration. Yeah, and everybody's yeah. always like, who's your doctor? Who's your doctor? But I don't want anybody to go to my doctor. <laughs> so I'm just like, Dr. Who? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Dr. Who. So I'm just funny. like, Dr. Who? Yeah. Jess. <laughs> Uh, you've always been a hustler, and speaking of like coming out with an apparel line, and me and Daniel kind of realized this. Uh, honestly, it was during the pandemic where we realized like the strength of your own business is like uh -huh. directly correlated with uh, how diversified your revenue is and the fact that or how engaged you are with those people like, that are part of your crew like you, know? you don't want all your yeah. revenue coming from one place because if that something happens with that then you're done right so you want to spread it and hopefully yeah. get it in a, a bunch of different places and i'm sure you've seen that if like if you make all your money only through stand-up then if stand-up dries up like through a pandemic then people are screwed. So right. I've seen a lot of comedians then get into a bunch of different businesses. And then therefore, you know, because as a comedian, you're your own small business. You know, now you have a bunch of different revenue streams from uh, different yeah. places that, you know, strengthens your your brand. Is that kind of what you realize, too? Absolutely. Sitting in the pandemic, man, is like, damn, I, I was actually waiting for the day where my my agents would call me and be like, okay, so we have to cancel all of your shows. And luckily, they didn't do that, but I was waiting for that because, I, like I said, my other comedian colleagues or what have you, they, they couldn't do shows. So I was forced to sit in the house and think of another hustle I could come up with. Like, man, what can I sell? What can I do? I have this big platform, huge. You know, I don't want to just do anything. And I'm just like, look, all these girls are getting surgery and all this shit. Uh, but some of them can't afford it. Let's just start an athletic line. Everybody's getting puppies. I'm in the midst right now of um, starting a puppy line. I cages, crates, uh, dog um, toys, and all that That's type of awesome. stuff. Uh, doggy clothes. Yeah, yeah, doggy clothes. We just got to be ready to be other things just in case this happens again. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, yeah, it yeah, keeps yeah. happening because COVID's not going anywhere. COVID is not going anywhere. So it's just like we got to. We gotta improvise. And, and you got your podcast now too. It's, it's on. Brilliant. It's on iHeart. I li I was checking that out. It's about twenty. You know, about thirty minutes an episode. Had now, now yeah. the, the podcast thing. Had you had extra shows before? You've you've done this before, but what's a little bit different about this one? The podcast. Yeah, yeah. This this uh, you know the, the one that you're doing now. I mean, you've done multiple shows, but this one yeah. this one seemed like when I was listening to it, it seems very intimate, almost like you're just kind of sitting there, just one on one. Yeah, because honestly, um, I have a I have a bunch of different sides. It's a bunch of different versions versions of Jess, and people just 
think that, you know, they it's just, just hilarious. But I really want to cater to me being, like, a mom on there. I have a different, you know, I, I'm in a relationship. Like, it's all types of layers to me that I just, you know, I, I just, I'm very transparent with them. And, you know, I let them on, in on a different part of me, you know. It's more serious. It's not always humorous when I talk to them on my um, podcast. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I, I really enjoyed it. Well, I mean, Thank you. Jess, uh, again, we want to let everybody know you're going to be at the Improv, um, two shows Friday, two Absolutely. shows Saturday. The Improv Orlando.com, easiest way to get your tickets. And uh, it was great talking to you, Jess. Hopefully, um, when uh, next time you're in town, you can come in live and uh, we could have you on the couch. Yes. Um, and I yes. think uh, by, by next time you come around, hopefully it seems like... We should have you in yeah, live. Yeah. I, I, th I think so. And, uh, Absolutely. Hey, good luck with your dog shirts. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. All right. We'll talk to you soon. I'll Take see care. you, Jess. I think she's folding laundry. I don't want to get involved in that. I don't want to be messing up her laundry. Um, she brought up something that I laughed about is like, uh, <laughs> like if you see someone, if you saw an employee at Walmart Stealing from the cash register. I've seen that. I mean, like, not specifically at Walmart, but at other places I worked at, either stealing merchandise. I or would money. not do a damn thing. Yeah, until I, you're the one getting blamed that you're getting. Well, that I'm you're a, stealing the money. Well, well, well I guess if, if you were, there, yeah. no, yeah. if I work there, I probably yeah. Ooh, man, that's a tough one. Depends on if I like the person or not. I might, I might go to the person and be like, "Yo, what are you doing?" No, you know, no. <laughs> that's who's, not my job. No, but I don't want to like n I, again. I yeah. don't want to get fingered for this, right? right? So I might go to them and be like, "Hey, do you know that it, this is going to put us all on the map?" I'm going to pull the shaggy. It wasn't me. <laughs> Who is the person that sees like a Walmart employee like uh, sticking a five dollar bill in their pocket, and we're like, "Oh, now I'm like in there, like I'm reporting this." No. <laughs> like you're just like good for you. <laughs> like you, I, you're. I, this this company's fine, and it With runs in my family. Money, too. I don't care. No one cares. I'm happy for. As it. a chirper, Tommy would do it. He's he, uh, he would. abides by the rules. He would. As a chirper, though, I got watered out a little bit. I wouldn't do a I, thing. But my dad, my, remember, my dad stopped a group of teens from dining and dashing at Morrison's buffet. <laughs> my dad pulled his Nissan Maxima in front of them, and cornered them in a cul-de-sac until the police arrived. That is awesome. Oh, is, really it, is it? It's the most embarrassing. My mom said it's the most embarrassing mark on the Dennis family. It was like a, most a, a it was a blight. Yeah, no, it's like that. Like dining and dashing. I feel like you're. My I, dad loved Morrison's. By the way, oh, he loved Morrison's. I feel like you're screwing over the waitress, and in that aspect, well, like, he was a regular. Yeah, he felt well, yeah, it's not a good you know, thing to do. But like, I'm not chasing anybody down. For no, he no, took it. like an old Florida dad that is no, like a vigilante. No, I like he it. took it personally. Yeah. He was a regular of this Morrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like once a and month. And that's not or as so. corporate as a Walmart to me. Like you know, even though Morrison's is, Wait, it's just me, like ah, uh, don't uh, come on. Uh, teens, allow me to get sell. The the good Florida trash man romance to you, other good Florida trash uh, yeah, man. I'm yeah. a good Florida trash man. Let me sell the romance for you a little bit. Uh, delicious hand carved turkey, mashed potatoes, the fix, the whole nine. My dad treats himself once a month, you know, after he works this one part of a territory. He's an over the road salesperson. It's a terrible job. You're just driving all the time, right? And he sees the Morrisons. He goes in there. He's a regular. He sees his waitress. You're exactly right. The waitresses and everything, and they're getting screwed over. And my dad took it personally. He's like, yeah, they're yeah. attacking my Morrisons. I must yeah, stop yeah. these kids. I like that. He could have been killed. That's what I'm and saying. That could be dangerous. He could have yeah, been yeah, murdered yeah, yeah. for like, mashed potatoes I, I, and gravy. Call the cops. That's Jell -O. Job. He could have been my dad it. murdered for Jello with coconut in it. Um, and, mm. and then back to Tommy. Gross. I, he, Tommy is a rules follower, but I have taught him not, not to snitch. be a snitch. Yeah, yeah. I, nice. Nice. Yeah. Because uh, nobody nice. likes you know the snitch. The yeah, but what snitch? if they asked him directly, Tommy, who's stealing the money? Oh, he might. Oh, he'll tell the truth at that point. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. different than like seeing something and taking it upon yourself to go to report, report it to, yeah. uh, to uh, uh, Walmart. I'm just like, don't. there is one person what? that I know. My wife. Oh, yeah. yeah. I believe, <laughs> and this is the only part of my wife I hate. She's a snitch. <laughs> I believe my wife deep down in her heart is a snitch, and I believe that's probably the hardest thing she has to do is to not rat me out for all the <laughs> laws I break <laughs> and all the things that I do wrong. You know? I hope she calls the Guess who hasn't worn it. their seatbelt <laughs> in a year? Guess who hasn't worn their seatbelt in a year? Me, Ooh, buddy. I like me. Have and you I don't driven even, anywhere in a Yeah, year? I don't even turn off the chime. I can't even hear it anymore. I oh. I mix it in with the beats. It's like I'm a DJ. I mix the chime <laughs> in with the beats. I want your 
medical marijuana uh, <laughs> recommendation to expire by one day, and then your wife calls <laughs> your would, police, yeah, and, then, and then your police are yeah, me in my front and yard. My husband is smoking pot in Illegally. his room. <laughs> Illegally. In his room, like I'm a 15-year-old. Here, here is a fax of his uh, <laughs> the recommendation I'll expired. Can, I'll open the door I, for you. I have <laughs> highlighted where it expired. Uh, it'll show up as gray on the fax since it's not all color. I will be at the jail to bail him out before he gets there. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you have to As go I'm yeah, like, why would, yeah. I'm looking at her I'm like what the hell are you doing she's like I had to do it <laughs> I brought Maisie too so she could see this it's a, it's a <laughs> teaching, teaching moment lesson, yep. teaching moment <laughs> a teaching moment what the F is wrong with you and then Maisie's like I <laughs> see <laughs> I, <laughs> yes I, follow the rules yeah. follow the laws I was, I was just when was I telling we brought Tommy along as a friend <laughs> like, why were you bringing Tommy was I telling Samantha like after the show one day I'm that here. I'm too Stop soft? Stop smoking weed, dude. Too soft for jail. Um, so Isn't that the name of your rap album that didn't <laughs> sell very well? I I, uh, I was having a conversation with I think Samantha Butler how I really don't want to go to jail. Um, well, what did you do? No, I mean I've done a lot. Uh, are you preparing? Or do you, is there no. something you need to tell us about? Because normally people that no, are concerned no. about going to jail have good reason. No, you no. Did, yeah, you did say this, and I can't remember why we were discussing jail. I just I, why are you too soft for jail? Well, because there's different types of jails. I used to. There's not I just mean, one jail pre, anymore. Yeah, I'm not. Like, I'm just saying. Like, we're more jail than we aren't. I don't break the law. Uh, I mean, I do break the law, not as much anymore, but before, but nothing like yeah. egregious, you know, like the regular stuff. Are we the number one break the law local? No. No. Podcast? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Big those them, guys have I done mean, some bad of, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're the, he's, uh, I mean, honestly, we may be the, we're the angels. We're the best show yeah, we've we, never even yeah. been. I've never been arrested. Have I mean, you been either. arrested? No, I've been detained. I have been detained. Has anybody here been arrested? Butler. Butler. No. 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 no, 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 no. We may have the only show yeah. that yeah. no one's ever been arrested. We're the only no, that's show not a good thing. We're all too much of goody two shoes. Yeah. One of us has to get arrested now. I'll do it. Let's do a hot well, tub. And t- um, I was going to say a hot tub time machine. Damn it. A ba- hot tub and mini fridge event. One of us has to get arrested. Well, a ba- hot, hot tub has to get arrested. No, well, I'm too soft for to get arrested. Do you want and mini fridge? Mini fridge will do it, but it has to be domestic. It, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it's the only person legally I can slap around, right? Because she's my property. I mean, when, no. <laughs> oh! <laughs> like, when I was younger, every once in a while, like, uh, a friend would have to go uh, spend a night in jail for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, and then, yeah. like a drunk tank. Right. Yeah, 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 like Sleep a drunk tank in college yeah. or whatever it is. And, like, I was never afraid of that. I was just like, ah, whatever. I just, you know, you have to go through the booking process. You you know, you, oh. uh, you don't Ron, actually go Ron to sleep. got arrested. No, I know. There's and he our, says he's show adjacent, so that might count. He's our he is our Twitch manager. Yeah, yeah. That's but for what though? Yeah, would you, you get didn't go to work? jail though? No, you got to go to jail. I think you got to be in the cell. You got to get booked. Yeah, I was detained one time. Um, I've been detained in the back of a cop car. That but that doesn't count. You guys curf- told me that it didn't count. Curfew violation. Anyway, um, here's why curfew. I'm too. Curfew. Yeah, we're some yeah. nerds, man. We <laughs> are some it. nerds. Yeah, and uh, that was in I was in high and school, and we or wonder or... why we're not cool. Um, you know, I, for, I keep forgetting that there is there a curfew in Orlando because there's a there was a maybe still is a curfew in Miami. If you're under 15, you can't be yeah, out. I've never at, heard on, of a curfew in my life. Yeah. So in Miami, if you're under 15 or if under 16, I think under 15, um, you can't be out on the streets past 11. And if you are just walking around the streets past 11, you're in curfew violation. And then they have to call your parents and like have them pick you up and they detain you or whatever. And me and my buddy are walking the subway when I was like 14 and uh, they detained us, had to call our parents <laughs> to come pick us up. You know, like that. That's that kind funny. of thing. We have an expert in our Twitch chat room. BDMX Con says, not arrested if they didn't strip search you and dehumanize you. You haven't been yeah, arrested. Yeah. <laughs> no, like He's dehumanize yeah. So <laughs> back, back to me being afraid Thank of going you. to jail. Thank you, sir. So I'm thinking, I'm like, man, I really, really don't want to go through that whole process. Like, again, nobody does. I know, but I used to not be afraid of it as much as I am now. Like, now that is deterring me from doing anything illegal or getting caught, like, like even taking a chance. So the threat of jail only matters when you're older. I think so. That's what I'm saying. When I was younger, old man, old man, first time in jail. That's sad. 
Yeah. And, and it's like, and it I, happens a people lot. People know that's like, your first time. But I think it so. happens a lot because oh, as you get older, you lose your mind and it becomes more likely for you to go to jail. Or you're one of those people that are like, ah, eh, it won't happen to me. Well, like as right? I sit here, as I age naturally sitting before you, yeah, yeah. I'm becoming more and more closer to jail because I'm going crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. you will be you'll you'll go crazy to the point where we'll never leave your no, house. No, we need to do the no, thing. He's gonna no, be like his neighbor that went around to, no. shooting people. <laughs> We're not talking about this yet, but we need to do the thing you 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 sent me last night in all seriousness. Uh-oh. Oh yeah, yeah, we need yeah, to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This no, is all yeah, part. I don't of like it. this. I already booked this, this, this is all part of Mo's me. coming in next no, Friday. We're, 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 gonna make we're some, doing it. We're gonna make some legal decisions with the show. I don't yeah, like yeah. teasing things, and we're not that type of show. I'm not Ryan Seacrest. I don't do the hoodwink. I don't. We'll be right back. I'm not doing. But we're getting Mo in here. We'll make oh, some God. changes around here. Make some legal changes around here. I wonder if anybody in our audience. I'm adopting Butler as my son. <laughs> if anybody in our audience have ever went to jail for the first time or like got booked or like even detained or not detained, but like went to jail okay. after 40 uh, for the whoa. first time. Because I that's probably rare, old right? jail virgin. 40 year old first timer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, because I contend that most likely if you're involved in some activities, you go now, I bet you there's a lot of people that got popped for DUI after 40 that they're nerd dad that just had one too that many counts, beers. Though. Oh. That does count. But it's like, then you like, well, I can imagine are, how miserable just NFL assistant coaches that do that. Like you got to uh, go number two on the metal toilet in front of everybody. <laughs> like I can do that. That's the easiest part <laughs> yeah, of jail. That's, that's, that's what I'm most afraid yeah. of. And cough. The, no, the, the, that's embarrassing. Yeah. I don't want to do that. You know what? I went to the urologist two weeks ago. Yeah, Dana's trained for no, jail. No, no, I can't remember going there. I can't even. Re- I can't Locked even see his. No, I don't know what happened. I can't even see his face in my eyes. I don't know if there was trauma. In, I don't know what happened. Daniel's Uh-oh. had so many examinations back there yeah. that he's used to it. I so don't even know what happened. Yeah, but they'll be screaming. At you. It's just <laughs> involuntary. It's not the same as a doctor. They don't have any bedside manner. A in jail. man, a man squeezing mean. my. I'm like, yeah. please don't be so mean. A, n- <laughs> a new man squeezing my scrotum is as normal to me as involuntary breathing. I used to be a lot harder than I am now. Too. Like I've softened Ooh, up too. I wouldn't which, go uh, saying that. I wouldn't mm. go yelling at the people. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be hard, man. No, no, no. Like, I'm soft, bro. Like it just it, like tougher, able to deal with uh, any situation. Uh, like you know, uh, someone yelling at me or being in like uh, around uh, <laughs> some other uh, criminals or whatever. Never would used to bother me. Now it does. You'd be a little uh, intimidated. Got, yeah, yeah, I got softer. Anyway, all right. Bye, bye. Welcome to another A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Dan. I'm Tom. Samantha's here. Butler's here. Hey, you can watch our show. I have dubbed it Orlando's Strongest Stream because it is. It's the most consistent stream in Orlando, man. You can jump on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tom and Dan Live and watch our live stream Monday through Friday. We usually fire up the studio around 1030 and then all of the replays are on YouTube later that evening, also under Tom and Dan Live. And November 4th, Sofa and Suds uh, races. 14th. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. November you know 14th. Sean Connery's dead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> November 4th. Is that today? <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. It's tomorrow. <laughs> no, tomorrow. November 14th. yesterday if you're listening to this on Friday. Oh, yeah. You know the best part of that is I was ready to go. When he said <laughs> November 4th, I was like, he moved it up. Let's roll. Let's go. Uh, 14th, mm-hmm. November 14th, Sofa and Suds, downtown Sanford, right in front of the West End. Everybody knows where it is. Yes, sir. Daniel and I are hosting it. We're going to have new merch out there. Races start at 2. Uh, big thanks to ABC Fine Wine and Spirits, JustCallMo.com, and SecuredRoofingAndRestoration.com. Um, and also Gabriella Plants is a sponsor, um, uh, Maggie Dogs, a bunch of others. Uh, anyway, um, a bunch of stuff going on, food trucks. It's free. Uh, you can bring your pets. Uh, yeah, it's and- like a quintessential, iconic Sanford event. If you've never been down there, you owe it to yourself and your family to come check it out because it's certainly one of the most creative and unique things I've ever been a part of, and I love being down there in historic Sanford, just chilling out, having some beers, and watching people race furniture. Family-friendly. Yep. We're not going to be cursing on stage. Mm-mm. We do the racing of the kids at one point. We do. Uh, so uh, come out. Angel's going to be DJing with us on yeah. stage, so we're going to have some help with some music. Um, and uh, you can watch some sofa races. Uh, our sofa, by the way, I just Butler showed us some pictures of the medium. Good. He built the frame, and Coming we to could- get you. We could be in contention yeah. to beat Audi this year. Coming to get you, Audi. Um, so, uh, real quick, I'm going to set this up just because uh, we got a guest online that I'm going to get his opinion on all this. Because it's, it's taken me about 
I've never been so fascinated with a particular topic that I have been with this. <laughs> and I, think, I, I, I think this. Go, I think you can speak for a lot of the show. I think you can speak for a lot of our listeners that this is a very hot topic, and we're about. I don't know. Is it forty sixty? Fitty fitty? It's pretty. It's a lot closer than I thought no. it would be. More people are convinced this works than are not. Correct. I've gotten more people that are swear by it than are skeptical That's of it. That's my 60-40 number. 60% yeah. of the people that I feel like we've talked to say that this works. They're not saying it's 100%, but they're saying it's damn close. And then 40% of the people are saying it's magic, it's fake, it does nothing. <laughs> so on a Halloween special, just to recap, um, the, uh, the person on the ghost tour brought out divining rods and was using it to find ghosts. And I started talking about it in last Friday. Friday's podcast, our Friday free show, and start talking about how people used to use these for water, not knowing that it was still prevalent and a lot of people still use them. And we got inundated with not only we took two calls on the show, but I got a bunch <laughs> of emails and then I made a post on the BDM page and hundreds of comments. And there are so many people are like, yeah, but work, don't know why it works. And then somebody dropped it on Reddit, thousands of comments. Mm -hmm. Someone uh, made a post. They're a part of some golf course yeah. um, it's a landscaping private forum. forum. Yeah. yeah, it's a landscaping private our forum. Facebook page, and they made a post like, hey, I was on this about divining rods, and then they took screenshots, sent me six different screenshots it's of crazy. pages of people like, yep, use them all the time, yeah. works, works. Uh, my, uh, my old boss taught me, how to, uh, taught me how to use them. I was skeptical first, it works. I all went the, online and to Amazon and found companies that make them. And I bought us. Yeah. I mean, they're pumping them out. They're making them right now. So we're going to have a discussion about divining rods because I researched a lot about them. And I think I figured it out. And I, I thought, now at first, well, I was going to br bring on like a professor of physics to explain how <laughs> this is you impossible. Know a professor well, of physics. I, I actually got in touch with the UCF uh, physics department. And they got back to me that they don't have anybody that can mm. go on like the radio to do this. Yeah. But, but I'm sure we could get one of. But I I realized that it, like ex having a physics uh, or a science teacher explain that there's no science behind this whatsoever is kind of boring because there's nothing even close to science behind it. It's complete nonsense. Yeah. So it's like there's not much they can explain. There's like yep, there's nothing that would make the rods move, be water, whatever you know. Yeah, whatever. So, but. I am now almost completely 180 back to I think they do work, but not for the reason that a lot of people do. And I want to talk uh, to a friend of ours, a friend of the show. I miss this guy. That uh, knows about being a mentalist. Uh, he knows about trickery. Yeah, he, he does. He, 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 he also, knows, he knows, he also about, knows how powerful your mind is if you can get yes. it in the correct state. Um, our good buddy, Kosha Kimlot. How you doing, Kosha? I am wonderful. Happy to be chatting with you all. This is blowing my mind that, that this this centuries old idea is is gaining so much steam and popularity. But it's easy for everyone to have an opinion about it. So I can see why so many viewers are are confused and and yeah, all over the place about it. Yeah. Oh, they, they, yeah. and and the the people that I like the most, and this kind of it, it kind of falls back on what kind of what I do with magic are the people that are willing to just kind of let it go and be okay with it. You know what I mean? Like I like I yeah, like yeah. the fact that there are guys that have emailed us and said, and this is a little weird for people. They've said, "Oh yeah, I still use them every day. Totally don't believe in them." You <laughs> see what I'm saying? Well, I don't believe it. it's magic. Yeah, I yeah. don't believe it's magic, but I use still these, use I, and it works. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know why it works, yeah, but why? it does. And that's the number one thing, Kosha is the. Yeah. And this is why I find this particular topic so fascinating because in most supernatural topics uh, like let's say people that believe in ghosts or people that believe in reincarnation or anything supernatural sure. orbs uh, orbs or energy and stuff there's always like and I'm fine believe in whatever you want it doesn't matter to me but it's always kind of like this particular situation happened to me this is why I believe this is what I saw so uh, or this is how I feel and it's kind of like oh yeah okay you know it's fine and it everybody has a different experience and and you know that kind of thing it doesn't fascinate me as much because I understand why people believe in that and, and it's fine but with this, it's a tool that people use in their everyday business and in their everyday work. And they're convinced that like, mm -hmm. and they tell me they're like, I don't think it's magic. I don't know why it works, but it does. But it is part and, of their workflow every day. Yeah. And so many people, Definitely. so many people were convinced that like, listen, I know that there's no science. And they would tell me they're like, 
listen, I don't think it's magic. I don't know why it works, but it does. So that's what fascinated me because I was like, yeah. why do so many people think it does? Like it, it works, right? Like there has to be something behind it. And then, well, so- you and I have been talking this out in the afternoons, and the only possible thing where we both kind of agreed was that we think that people that are all in on this and believe it are able to hold these divining rods, whatever they are, and then they're able through like almost repetition, through uh, being comfortable, they're able to get themselves or get their mind in a state where almost subconsciously they're able to use the knowledge that they've gained by being a surveyor or a pipe finder, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, irrigation person. It's uh, almost like we think they've set up their mind. It's almost like a form of meditation using these mm-hmm. divining rods. That's the only thing that... Yeah. And, and, Am and, I explaining that correctly? Yeah, yeah. And I have this theory about this, but let's, Kosha, let's start with the beginning of the science behind it. And I'm not sure, you know, obviously if you... But there's well, There's no actual way that two rods can locate anything underground pipes running water and yeah, it's in a fact, pseudoscience in fact um there yeah, it, yeah it's like it's like the fortune tellers right you can use tea leaves you can use coffee beans you can use all these things but the actual tool right whatever it is you're using is usually uh, a smoke screen right it's not the real thing it's uh you know a fortune teller doing a cold reading on somebody and just paying attention to the person but, but we as humans, we need these other tools for some reason, right? We have a history of these things. And, and it's understandable, right? We, we want to find water. We've been using this for centuries. And so, it, you know, I understand why it's been around for so long. I have two, two more, two real questions for you, right? First, we can look specifically at this particular case of these divining rods, thousand rods, and figure out why they work and why they don't work and what's behind it. But I'm also more fascinated in the bigger picture of why we believe these things and why we don't change our belief structures despite evidence, despite proof or lack of proof, um, people don't want to change their mind. That's what I'm really fascinated yeah. as a magician in because I see how easily people believe things and, and how our belief structures are formed. And I constantly meet people who are like, yeah, okay, well, we know that's a magic trick, but, but this is still real, right? And they give me an example of some, some other wacky thing. So, you know, clearly there's two things going on here. We can get specific about the divining rods, but there's something more about our nature and, and drawing towards believing in things and wanting to believe in things. Right, yes, that they want, yes. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. It, the, the, uh, our human brains, I've, I, I listened to this in a book about, in that gambling book, uh, why people are so dead set in their beliefs. And we uh, apparently they're uh, evolutionary, uh, you know, uh, psychologists that have studied this, that humans basically it was advantageous to our survival to deeply believe in whatever we believe in, because that would keep us alive longer. For instance, anytime a bush or rustled or whatever, we would believe that that's a tiger behind there or danger to us and we run. And it was better for us just to, to, to uh, dead set believe that than to question it because the questioning well, that used it to be the most common could outcome, kill us. Right? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. So it was, it was better for our survival to deeply believe in whatever we believed in and not question yeah. it. I, I don't know if you've uh, so, re- uh, read something about that. Makes about sense. It. Absolutely. No, I, I have, of course. And so if you're looking for a well, right, if we're talking about, you know, thousands of years ago, centuries ago, if you're looking for water, well, it's much easier to be like, yeah, hey, I've got this tool. I've got a trick. I've got a way of doing it. Yeah. I've got someone that can do a dance and make it rain. Like, of course, it, it is about survival. We totally understand. And that makes perfect sense. Nowadays, I, I'm blown away what you had said earlier, that people for their work are constantly using it and doing it. So maybe to return to your question of how is this possible, well, let's just look at it. What's the probability of success? If you use a pencil, if you use a pen, if you use a stick, your fingers, whatever it is, you know, if you don't have that tool, can you be just as lucky? And I would say yes, statistically, you know, uh, James Randi, the magician, had his million-dollar challenge, and he tested people on these dousing rods, and not a single one of them could come close when it was, like, statistically set up. Like, let's test it. We've hit these pipes with water under the ground. Let's see what you can find. And no one was ever able to do it. But when you're just a guy on a golf course walking around – and by pure chance it happens to you, oh, yeah, you're going to have that story to tell the rest of your life to people about this magical power you have. And there's and worth to that, yeah. And, the, and well, there's, there is value 
in your mind to that story. Yeah, so, that's interesting. Man. Kosha, uh, so here goes my theory, and tell me if you think this theory is valid, right? Because I started looking at it, I'm like, okay, so let's, uh, like, there's nothing in the rods, right? There's no way the rods work. We saw the uh, Amazing yeah. Randy's test. We bought some, you know, they're, they're, well, <clears throat> they're just metal rod. They do nothing. Oh, by the way, so many people said, go out and try it yourself. Like, you try, everybody kept telling me to try it myself because uh, the, then I'll see. So I have a theory about all this. So anyway. Yeah, because it's uh, don't knock until you try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, but so the Amazing Randy did this, Mythbusters did this, and under a, uh, a perfect experiment where they were able to run water through pipes. No one was able to replicate actually finding no. anything from the device. So it, they basically debunked the actual rods themselves doing anything, right? But here's my theory, and tell me if you think this could be correct, Kosha, because you are a mentalist and you know the power of subconscious thought. So He already knows what you're going to say. So let's – okay, <laughs> uh, and I, I'm just going through the golf course thread. So let's say you are a landscaper at a golf course or you are the caretaker of a golf course because a lot of people use this in the golf course industry. 18 hole or like a little par three? Like 18 hole okay. to find irrigation pipes and to and fix How them. How long and all have I been there? Um, you have a, a couple years experience okay. or whatever. Anyway, someone showed you about these d divining rods or whatever. So the overwhelming majority of people that email me are like, I don't know why it works, but it does. And then I'm like, well, if it was just pure like randomness, because there is a I, there's science behind like, oh, why do the rods move? Well, when you hold something in unstable equilibrium, subconsciously through tiny uh, muscle twitches, mm -hmm. you can... Idiomotor response. Idiomotor response, exactly. I knew Kosha would know. And the idiomotor response is what's causing the, the rods to move, right? But that is happening yeah. with your brain. Yeah. So your brain, your brain is basically... It's like micro-calculations. Making yeah. an idiomotor uh, response that's causing the rods to move. So your brain is doing this, right? We And that's the truth about it, right? So your brain is moving the rods. But why is your brain moving the rods to statistically because everybody did say like hey they don't work 100% of the time but it's like 75% or more and I'm like is how it because can because the positive of finding the water releases dopamine is it nothing more than a fix of being right no because I started thinking about that too I was like well maybe they are just thinking about the times they were right and and misremembering all the times they were wrong but I was like no it can't be this level of people that are convinced they work so my theory being Kosha is if you work in this field where you are a landscaper, you know about irrigation or whatever, right? Obviously, uh, everybody in this field is the one that's using these divining rods to find irrigation pipes or uh, some sort of pipes underground. You're, like, so you go out there on the golf course. Your brain, you hold the rods and you think the rods are telling you, but technically it's your subconscious, your brain doing a bunch of calculations based on your knowledge, your experience, where you know kind of how they lay pipes and yeah. golf courses, like they lay them vertically or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you have experience yep. in your brain. Yeah, you've and gathered all this knowledge and your brain knows this knowledge, whether you're activating it at the right time or and, not. And so you're not even thinking about it, but your brain is subconsciously and therefore leading you to a general area where 75% chance they're going to be in this area. It's not just totally random. It's like your brain is doing the math. So these rods are putting you in a position where you can activate the knowledge that your brain has already gathered? That's what it seems well, to me. That's a, that's a stretch. That last sentence, I don't know if they're putting you in, the, in that state, but they're giving you, it's a tool that allows you to uh, release maybe if I were to tell you, you know, find the water, right? That would be too much stress and pressure. Right, right. But now you're saying this tool does it for you. And so, yeah, you are, you're relaxing a little bit. And you're letting Interesting. Go. You yeah. So, so Kosha, do you think I, that could be the, because now there's uh, the only way to, I guess, prove this is to have that same person make an educated guess. But what I'm thinking is that person, if you ask them to make an educated guess of where the pipes are, maybe they would overthink it. They would uh, yeah. not, not let themselves relax enough for their brain to do the calculations. They'll be like, uh, uh, I, yeah. I think they're here. Like I'm going to go opposite. Anybody who failed the, the test put up by Amazing Randy would be like, oh, but, the, you know, the cameras are, are messing with my brain waves. I can't do this now. Like, well, I believe have in an that. Excuse. Yeah. If you run this as an experiment, if you run it as an experiment and people fail, they're going to have an excuse and an explanation for why it didn't work. And then they're going to be by themselves with a stick on a golf course doing it again. And they're going to be by themselves yelling, I told you so, you know, the I know most, I can do it. 
the, the most yeah. fun part for me to watch, and we have tons of these videos of people doing it on our on our webpage, are the people that do it, and it's so perfect. Like the rods are, you know, like they're very smooth, they're very fast. It's almost like they just, you know what I mean? It's almost like reps with the rods. But they're so in tune with the rods now that when they, like that one guy that uses them, when they bend the, in, I mean, that thing looks legit. But it's also in his own backyard where he has knowledge of where the irrigation no, is. No, I know, so, but I'm just so, saying it looks so yeah, real. Yeah. It really does. So, and, yeah. so you've got you've got a couple different things, right? you got uh, the probability of finding water, right? Where you are, the land, how, how likely it is that water is there, and we don't know. If you were to guess anywhere, what's the percentage of you getting water in the first place, right? You need to know what that is to begin with. Um, then you've got this tool, and you've got the idiomotor response, and you've got that physical connection. And for anybody else who's interested, you can look at, like, pendulums, very, very similar thing, a little little thing hanging on a string, and you hold it by your fingers, and it's the idiomotor response making it move. But, you know, I, I've worked with lots of magicians and mentalists who fool uh, audiences of thousands into believing that they've got some psychic power working through this pendulum, and... People talk to dead relatives using these pendulums <clears throat> when it's nothing but a physical response. So here's, here's what I want to say is that as a magician, I know that the best kind of magic, the kind that really fools people that they have no explanation, has multiple layers working together in order to hide the secret. And you have a physical element, a psychological element, and then you have the fact that what people experience and what they remember is different sure. from each other. Yeah, yeah. So I think we have the same thing here. We have the probability of success of just finding the water with or without the thing. Then we have the, the fact that people already know and they have intuition, they have prior experience. When you mentioned, they already know the ground and they're much more likely to find water with or without the thing. Then you've got the idiomotor response of the physical stick convincing them, so they have the confirmation bias. And then what you mentioned is the forgetting, right? They forget how often they failed. Reinforcement of the times they got right. Yeah. The storytelling that they get out of it. So all of these things start coming together, and then it becomes this like web, like a spider web, right, that's really fragile, and any one of these points can easily be dis dismissed. But when you bring them all together, that's why we have such a, a large group of people who are like, oh, no, but it works, and there's, th that's why it feels right. There's like an element of truthiness to it. Yeah. Because all of these separate elements, psychological, physical, mental, intuition, all these things are combining together to fool ourselves. So now I think the question is, well, does this harm us or does this help us as a species as we move towards, you know, understanding our universe? And I would argue that following pseudoscience does bring harm to us in the long term. And while it's entertainment, people forget that it's entertainment. And then um, they, they may say, oh, I know, it's a, I know it's a lie. I know it's entertainment. I'm just doing this for fun. But in reality, if they think about it that way, then there's other areas of life where they're going to give up control and, and not look... For, for the real answers and, and be willing to, to go to a fortune teller or, you know, read their coffee leaves. Right. And a lot of people do that for entertainment. You know, right now, psychics even virtually are making billions of dollars. Yeah, they are. So who am I to not this? But, but I, I think it's important for us as a species to be a little more rational. So, Ko Kosha, I'm going to get a little more out there here because I, okay. I'm now going to argue the point that they do work and, and I'll explain, right? So... Let's say, let's say, and, and, but they work for a reason that may be uh, cockamamie, but uh, they make, there could be a point behind it. So let's say you work as a uh, irrigation person for a golf course, right? And so you have years of experience. You kind of, uh, you know, get, uh, you, you've seen where they've laid irrigation before. Yeah, you're and you're familiar kind of, with how the golf course runs. Yeah, yeah. And, you have a bunch of knowledge that will make, will give you a better educated guess than the most layman, right? That doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, sure. this thing, right? So is it possible that the divining rods are just a tool to help your own brain make the best educated guess and therefore you can make the argument that they do work just they work to, to ease your anxiety to yeah. help I your think brain that's what he's saying yeah yeah to just help your brain so literally you do have a higher likelihood mm -hmm. of finding the irrigation pipes because you, you're using the tool using the tool even though the tool's not doing anything but it's basically it's a way to trick your brain into relaxing enough or whatever to do the calculations to make a better educated guess than if you didn't have the tool and you overthought or maybe said like, ah, you know, like. Well, the tool isn't doing anything, but the tool still serves a purpose as being a comfort 
for not having a tool, right? And, and I equated to this, Kosia, as like there have been studies where people have taken placebos. Sure. And the placebo actually like mm-hmm. healed them or whatever using because they they literally thought they were taking like the cure to whatever they had and but it was nothing but a sugar pill but they actually got better and then it's unexplained and you're like well it could have been a million different things they could have just naturally your immune system could f- fix it but there it's happened enough where yeah. it's like man there's a something behind your brain thinking that you're yeah. being healed and so could it be where the divining rods are actually they are helping people find the pipes only because it's helping them relax their brain to do the subcount the subconscious up, yeah. subconscious calculations <laughs> Yeah, so then in that case, the the science will eventually show what part of our brains, what allows humans to be able to pick up on these certain things. I mean, there's always going to be, that's why there's a difference between the the pseudoscience, right, and the scientific. There is, most likely, if it's so consistent, right, if it's statistically significant that it happens enough, then there's got to be a scientific explanation of how humans or some humans are able to get to this. But I think what you're relating to as far as the actual rod is just like magicians having wands, we have thousands of years of shamans and their sticks and it's because you know we as human beings very scared of the environment we didn't we didn't uh put power into the human we put power into nature into sticks into objects yeah for for as long as we've been alive so so it makes sense that we would transfer this power onto a stick that would give us this power i mean it's we're, on we're brand, of our right? own power. yeah like when you're listing wands and bow staffs and all these things that people that are mystics wizards and all these people have they have one thing in common they all have sticks <laughs> so they can chill out yeah. and use their minds so like yeah I, yeah I, I kind of made this correlation. So let's say, like, I know about how to gamble properly. I've read a lot about it or whatever, Mm -hmm. right? So I know, like, what kind of what the lines are worth and what numbers, uh, like, you should and shouldn't gamble. How do you gamble the best, though? What's your tool to relax you enough to make the best decision? Well, let's say I had some magic sticks that I I swore. I'm like, where are my magic sticks point at the game? That's the game that wins more often than if I pick it myself without the sticks, right? You should totally do this, by the way. So the sticks don't do anything, (laughs) but... But what they do do is kind of take (laughs) the pressure of me overthinking which bet is the best and you and they use my brain. It also gives you an excuse, right? It gives you that nice out because if it doesn't work and everything fails, you can go, oh, man, my sticks are bad. It's like I'm using my knowledge to pick the best game. But if I did it without the magic sticks, I may overthink and be like too "Ah, much is on the line without the the sticks. With the sticks, you get a buffer. And so is there anything behind that? Uh, Kosha, where it's basically like I said, you're 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 using the divining rods just to make your brain work better. Yeah, that, it's an interesting way of, of phrasing it that you're using it to make the brain work better. That that's what I'm not sure that I can agree with, but but I see how I see why you're making that statement because you people I get the idea of releasing the stress and putting the onus on the stick. So certainly that that feels really good. I guess the question is, are there any tests that can be done? And and will those tests make a difference? Like I, I don't think I don't think there's any test that we can put together that will even if we're 100 percent sure that this is correct. Either way, will change anyone's mind. Right, well, I agree with you. When, <laughs> yeah, no, Koshi, what's interesting is they they've already debunked the actual sticks and the science behind that. Like Amazing Randy, MythBusters are like, okay, the sticks don't do anything, but no one's done a test to see if my theory is correct. Where the sticks actually help the person make a more educated guess than they would without the sticks and them just making the well, guess. Well, that could be it's, anything, though, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be sticks. Well, somehow, it, it like, it's only been, you know, uh, with these divining rods and the irrigation and the pipes, uh, this is the only, like, honestly, the only thing that I've ever seen in current day to 2021 that's ever been like this, where they're using, people are using magic sticks yeah. and <laughs> don't believe in magic, by the way. No. They don't believe in supernatural stuff and they don't know why it works. And that's why I'm freaking out because I'm like, why are they so com- It has to have a better probability than without the sticks for them to be continually use them and for well. this many people to believe. And, and I think you just said the word, right, probability, and the fact is people don't understand probability. Okay. People don't understand math or numbers, and, and they just, we, no one in real life right now <laughs> uses math and statistics to have a good understanding when something is statistically significant versus it's not. And, and so we're just screwed as a species because the things that 
feel good to us are, are going to be what people are drawn towards. Yeah. No matter whether you present them the right math, because the right math might only show a very small percentage difference, you know, in not using them versus using them, and that won't be enough to change anyone's mind. They're going to be like, yeah, well, it's okay. I'm still going to continue. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right, you're, right. you're right, because it, it's like they're not hurting anybody. They're like, ah, whatever. Like, it's it's like a no big deal, but it, it is ridiculous. I wonder if you'd continue to use these sticks if every time you use them, you took one hour off your lifespan. <laughs> What's interesting to me yeah. is that if they, if people, you know? all these people stop using the sticks, if they could just guess the the pipes with the same problem, they won't have the right. That, that would be the test. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be the exactly. That would be the test to see if people can go out there and whatever it is that they're looking for, whatever whether it's water or something else, see if they can do it without it, without putting the pressure on them of hey, this is a test. Let's see if you can do it. It's more like hey, we found all the people that are really gifted with these sticks, and now let's give them all different kinds of things. Let's give them nothing, and then again. again that's the point. My point is that we can do all these tests, and even if we find out the statistical significant truth, doesn't matter. Then no, no one will give a damn. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. So that's I a, agree. Kosha, what is that? It seems because <laughs> I'm uh, I'm constantly, and this this has hurt my friendships, my uh, workplace, my marriage. Where oh I God. question everything, and I'm so skeptical of everything. And uh, my every time I see a video, my wife shows it to me. I'm like, "That's fake," and it drives her crazy. And everybody's like, "Just enjoy life. Uh, what are you doing?" And I'm like, "I'm obsessed with knowing Just enjoy what's real, your sticks, man. Knowing why something like and I this guy doesn't enjoy his sticks, Kosia. As soon as someone told me these yeah. sticks are BS, don't do anything, <laughs> I would immediately stop oh. using them and be embarrassed to use them. You should have seen how mad he was when I bought the brass ones on Amazon. Why, Kosia? <laughs> Why don't people care that things are real or not? Yeah, that, well, man, that's the question. Right? For me, the, the big thing is why don't people understand that there is an actual harm to this? Like, when I hear people say there's no harm to that, I disagree because I think there is psychological harm. There's long-term harm for us as a species to believe in the wrong things. It just slows us down from, from you know, m moving forward. And, but it's, it's because we have had thousands of years of belief and intuition and feelings about all these things and we only have a few hundred years of good science and mathematics, which most people don't use or understand. So, you know, myself included, it's like it's all complex. And so you go with your gut, right? And there's lots of really great books right now about that, about intuition and the placebo effect. And so, I think the more we study it, the more we understand. I now do a survey of my audiences, right, in virtual and in person, where I'm like, how many of you, you know, believe in magic and 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 really love this experience? And how many of you raise your hand if you're very skeptical and you don't believe in any of this? And, and for 10 years I've been doing this, and it's always like a quarter of my audience is like, I'm very, very skeptical. A quarter is like, I believe in everything. And then half of them are just like, eh, whatever, I'll go with either way. So I think as a population, and from the books that I've read on the placebo effect, is just some of us, our, our brains and the chemicals in our brain wire us to believe different things and more things. And so it, it's just like it's a personality trait. It's, it's chemically inside of us to do this. Um, and it's just that what we believe in changes over time, but our willingness and desire to believe is chemically uh, implanted in us. Uh, Kosha, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the power of the human brain um, because it'd be a good book title. There's for th you. There's two things about the human brain that fascinate me, fascinate me. One is that how much stuff we don't know we could actually do is in there and like uh accessing that yeah uh that stuff and then also how easy it is to trick the human brain and let's start with how much stuff is in there so there's tons of stories and I, i'll see them on social media uh of like people that and usually it happens if they like hit their head really hard but all of a sudden they'll start speaking a different language or they'll uh have some sort of mathematical ability that yeah. they didn't have before. I can tell you every Tuesday since 1950 <laughs> till well, now the, what day yeah. it, I, of I mean, the there, week it was. There's there's a story about a guy who hit his head. He took like uh, like Mandarin Chinese when he was like I remember those, in grade yeah. school and then now he could speak almost perfectly fluent Mandarin yeah. Chinese and like the people are like what how is this happening and so he that, has to use rods though when he does it it's <laughs> but, weird but that was <laughs> that was in there like in his brain and he and he just had to access it and then there's there's tons of like proof of like therapists putting someone under like uh, a hypnotism and, and memory like remembering memories sure. that they never yeah. could have brought up and like so your brain stores a lot of information and so that's interesting 
And then also on the other side, it's really easy to trick our brains and a lot of magicians like yourself. And I've seen online, uh, like a lot of TikTok people, I call them TikTok magicians. They'll do these mentalist tests or they'll write something on a mirror and then be like, think of a, a, a vegetable. I think and I'm so <laughs> weird. They get, I'm always wrong. Like, <laughs> yeah. I am, I am well, so insane. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm an insane person. Yeah. So when I do those, and, and yeah. I hate those guys. I'm a and basic I'm glad bitch. I, I get, get them all wrong. I get them every, he guesses it every time. I'm a basic bitch. My brain works like they want me to want it to, and I and he guesses it every time. So, let's talk about both those things first. It, how much your brain actually remembers, and the computing power of a human brain that we don't even use. Um, there is a mystery behind that, right? Oh, I mean, it, it's mind blowing to me. I think you know, definitely for this, you you need to get the the doctor people on the line to, to tell you all about that about the brain. I. I'm a layman on that as well, too. But, but surely, I, I agree with everything you just said. It's incredible um, what we haven't uh, un uncovered yet. But again, hopefully with progress in science, we will. We're going to understand that there's nothing supernatural, that it's all natural. Yeah. It's just we don't understand it fully yet. And, and, then, um, the, and then the suggestions. Yeah, all of that, 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 that's, I mean, that to me is what, again, what, as a magician, what drew me into psychology and the human mind was, how easy it was to influence people and how similar we all are in the way we think. So, you know, when you, and I, I'm not here trying to ruin any magic, but when you watch magicians do something for you, if it's pre-recorded, right, if it's on TikTok and you're watching it and it works for you, well, the amazing thing isn't really how did this person read my mind. The amazing question is, wow, am I really just like everybody else? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Is, is it statistically significant because clearly more than 50% of the people watching this video are going to are gonna go, fall, not fall for it, but they're going to follow the mental processes and be led down the path in order to make this decision. And as a magician, you start as a teenager doing these simple psychological tricks for people, asking them some questions, asking them to think of something, you know, lead them from one thing to the next, and you're like, oh my God, this is significant, statistically significant, where I'm consistently being getting these things right. And it's not like I have any magical power, it's just statistics, but because the people you're performing for haven't asked a thousand people to do the same thing, and this is their first time in life someone asked them to think of a vegetable, they're like, oh my God, how did you know that I was thinking about a carrot? That's unbelievable. Right. And so that's why magicians get uh, credit, and mentalists especially get credit for powers they absolutely do not have, and then... They're very willing to uh, accept credit for those powers as well. But that's a different, <laughs> a different matter. Um, but yeah, no, no, no. It, it makes perfect sense. And again, like it, it's similar to me that when people take a personality test and they're like, "God, how did they know so much about me?" Well, it's like, well, you gave all the answers. Right. You just told the system everything, and it just took that and spit it back out at you in a, with a different outfit, you know, in a different yeah, look. Yeah. But it's exactly the answers you gave to it. How are you amazed by this? So. So same thing with these psychological uh, experiments and magic tricks and all that stuff. Is It's amazing when it's the first time. But as a magician, you get hooked on it because you're like, God, why is this working? Why is it that people are consistently saying the same thing, thinking the same thing? And, and then you realize you can um, uh, fix your verbiage. You can change a word or two. You can change how you move your hands, what you say, what you do. And that has effects on people. To me, being a magician is like being in a laboratory and testing something on every audience. That's why it's so much fun. And to see people get fooled, yeah, it's um, it is so, fun. So, yeah. So yeah, but <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. Kosha, is, but there's, we there's gotta, a part of like, come on, people, we can do better. We gotta go <laughs> see Kosha again. I know, I know. And I, do the and are are you still doing your uh, your dinner shows? I'm in the metaverse now. You gotta come see me in the metaverse. Oh, <laughs> <all right. laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta fly into the space. You know, actually, I I, I have been a hundred percent virtual. I'm still virtual. I've been home with my babies. Oh, and um, and I, I've done more magic for more people around the world in the last year. I had the best year in business that I had in 20 years nice. because I just embraced this virtual world. Um, and I've done like hundreds of these Zoom performances for just, it, it's been mind blowing. So my team is back to doing in person shows. And, and we're back. We're at Christner's every Saturday night doing oh, close up nice. magic. I can't, I can't wait to be back in person. Like, I do miss it. But, I, but I'm one of the maybe like a dozen or a couple dozen magicians that embrace the virtual world. Yeah. And, and I, I love that. So certainly, if, you, if anybody wants to find me virtually right now, they can... But it's not pre-recorded, right? I'm not, like, on TikTok putting on videos. 
it's still all it's about real. the live experience. Yeah, it's live. It's live. I got to be careful. It's not real. I don't really yeah, yeah. be careful what I say here, but it's hundred percent live. If you've never seen Kosha, it's absolutely uh, an amazing show. And Kosha, where can people find you? Yeah, if you go to uh, kmagic.com, the letter K magic.com that'll take you to my website and find all the social media and connect with me say hello um yeah yeah it's it's a, a crazy new world I, i've been doing this for 23 years and this last year i've done two card tricks for people in the last year and a half physically like <laughs> That's in person crazy dude it's, <laughs> that yeah, is it's insane a, but you know it's i'm i'm selfishly i'm happy that you just get to be around your kiddos yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. as a oh as, as a dad, you know, da- Tom and I are, are newer dads. Well, I guess we're older now that we have kids that are you know, <laughs> inching towards ten years old. But still, man, like what a what a happy accident to be able to do that. Still have a good year and be with your family. That's yeah. great. Because uh, in yeah. the, in the yeah. past, you would have to be flying around everywhere and traveling. Uh, you know, constantly gone. So. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, some things uh, positive come from uh, this whole thing where, uh, you know, it, it's nice to look at that. Or it's like, all right, you know, yeah. instead of looking at all the horrible, like, you know, it's like, this yeah. is cool that this happened. Yeah, there's really nothing we can do. Absolutely. Change your perspective just a touch. But, hey, man, thanks so much for your time. It's always a pleasure talking to you. I really appreciate you getting on here and trying to make sense of nonsense when we bring you, uh, <laughs> we bring you things. We always bring you something that we're enamored by, and, and I, I am always comforted by your, your uh, explanations. Yeah, no, you guys, I, I love that you guys take these ideas and these things very seriously. I know how many <laughs> videos you watch and everything you post on. You do your research, you learn about this stuff. So I'm 100% with you, and I think that your listeners and everyone should have a critical mind. I get why we're drawn towards these things. Again, it's just part of human nature. But I would encourage everyone to just think a little deeper to say, well, how does this affect the way I approach my life? How does, th- does this correlate to the other things I believe about my children, about schooling, about whatever it may be, right? right? You know, we we say that there's no harm, but there is some kind of impact. And I think that when you when you believe in things despite or because of the evidence, you, you it should teach us something about our own selves. So it is worth digging into, uh, and I'm, I'm glad you all are talking about it. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, Thank man. you, Kosha. Take care. Uh, give some love to the family. We'll talk soon, okay? Take care, guys. All right, man. Be good. Uh, I, keep, see, I keep telling that same thing to EJ. What? I keep telling him. I'm like, you believe you're entertaining and you're not. <laughs> this is doing Magic. harm. It's doing harm to you. See, I, like the more I look at it, the more I really do think that there could be something to the divining rods only to help the person think of where that what they're looking for like it's in, a, in a better way. I put it in like the same category. It's, yeah, I, I, like a placebo I, rod, I, but it actually does. I know placebo help rod. Them. You, sir, are no placebo rod. Like, for instance, like, let's say um, before I gambled. I go back to gambling because it's like well, there's isn't a it chance. Just baseball right? superstition? I mean, isn't it no difference than if you walk up to the plate and you don't have your lucky socks on? You're not as comfortable. Boom. That's yeah, it. It's a, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then it's like, well, every time I do have my lucky socks, I hit and then therefore. Or I have a higher percentage how many times have you struck out wearing your lucky socks once how many times have you struck out not wearing them 15 oh must be the sock yeah but now the the socks do nothing but mentally they set you up they they, they comfort you they are like oh i have the power of the socks security blanket it's so i think maybe it's like oh i have the power of the rods even though they do absolutely nothing and i want to make that clear they do nothing and yours is even more dire because the socks are big grandiose baseball that let's take that out of equation let's just take it into micro like what did what did he say the um uh when your when your body or your mind is making the decision for you it's uh, uh it, oh idiomedi or idiomotor movements okay or, idiomotor movements okay yeah, yeah. so imagine that, this that, you that get your out your brain. rods you're not doing a great big grandiose you're just getting them out and you're ready to go your brain is so powerful that as soon as it, you're activated you get that box out as soon as you're pulling those rods out your brain is actively starting to set you up and put you in a state where you are able to find these pipes right yeah. This whole process Using, of getting the rods, bending them over, putting them in your hands, and then you get in that position. Well, there you are. You've achieved homeostasis, or you've achieved yeah, this yeah. wonderful comforting area for your brain, and then your brain goes, ah, I like yeah. this. Let's find these pipes. And then yeah. and yeah, something there's something like that. that. I think All that right. is what it is. I, and, and there's no other explanation beyond that, except for, like Kosha said, that it's complete random and no one's remembering all the times they miss the pipes. But I think it's more than that. I think that it's helping them be relaxed and make the uh, best educated guess that, that is more educated 
than if they didn't have the rods because they may be overthinking it or not comfortable with the fact that, or not even trust their own knowledge. So I, it's got to be something close to that I'd like for to this me, many people to believe it. To me, like also it's like when you reinforce that, like if you're a company and you send these guys out in the workforce to, to the dig, county does it. to <laughs> dig wells and then you buy them the rod, you're reinforcing... Yeah, the wells maybe I, I read some stuff about like uh, a lot of areas depending on where you are. There's water everywhere. It depends on how deep you dig. So uh, it'll t wherever the rods tell you, you'll find the water. So there's a lot of that. But in in our specific case, it seems like all irrigation pipes. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like well, around this what area, about the ghosts. Yeah, but what around around this area? <laughs> oh, where where isn't area. an irrigation pipe in Baldwin? So if I pull these out and I walk out there and they cross an X and I get a shovel and I dig, there's going to be a pipe down there. Not no, because well, it just I guess it depends on what place it is. But I I contend that if you work in irrigation, you're going to know that they follow probably the sidewalk or whatever, you know that kind of thing, and that's why they believe it works. Anyway, I agree with you. I think we're done with the divining rods All now. Right. Like, get it? We're n we're gonna we get. No one's Put changing. Put a rod in it. We're done. No one's changing their ways. By the way, anybody no. who hears this is going to be like, mm, "I still work." And I don't even fault you because maybe they do. What do I do with these rods? Stick them up your ass. <laughs> I like that. That's the problem. <laughs> you know what? That was the right answer. You win a prize, <laughs> Stanley. Welcome back to a corporate time. So, what is this now? Pikmin Bloom. It's a new app from the Ni Niantic. Niantic. The same people that made Pokemon Go. I know what you're thinking. Okay. This is different, though. It's similar, but different. This is like these little creature called Pikmins. Okay. And they're like little half plant, half um, animal creatures that only your phone can see. And you, uh, you get those just by walking. You don't have to catch anything. You don't have to battle any Pokestops, any of that garbage. You're just, it's literally just walking, and then you get like these little creatures, and then they plant flowers everywhere you walk. If you give them nectar, and then you collect the flowers off their heads. So, they're plants. You're looking through your phone. And you can. Okay. Here, I'll show you. I'll get my Pikmin out. So, because you showed me Pokemon Go one time, and it's like, all right, you, you could look through your phone, and you could see the Pokemon. Okay, so there's me. Yeah, yeah. I've done 831 steps, so not many, but see the feet? See this, these little guys? Okay, see. Yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> there they are. There's my little Pikmins. And that one got me an orange, so I got the orange. I'm going to give them some nectar now. So it says, uh, you walk I around your this. neighborhood with a small but ever-growing band of Pikmin pals who collect you. fruit and items as you wander. Tapping on the fruit distills it into nectar of different varieties, depending on the color, which is fed to your Pikmin. See, this is Billy. Up to six times and a day. And my other Pikmin's name is Roger. I give them very straight-ahead <laughs> oh. American general store. Which causes anti -mask the flowers <laughs> on your head to bloom. Tapping yes. the petals adds them to your inventory, yes. and they can be used to initiate a time-limited flower planting binge, which leaves a lovely, colorful trail wherever you walk before a supply of those petals runs out. Okay, why am I showing you this game? Because I think your boys will love it. Christine nailed it. I think that it's something you guys can do together. You've been playing tag there's outside. There's plants involved. Yeah, there's plants involved. All you got to do is walk. There's no, you don't have to catch anything. You don't have to battle anything. You're just walking. And your it, kids don't know how to do nothing, so this is perfect. This is perfect well, for But them. they don't like to walk. Well, they can well, feed the I, Pikmin. They I'd can give them, them the nectar. walk without looking at a screen. No, you don't look at the screen. No, you put oh. it in your pocket. You don't need to look at the screen. It's different. That's my point is you don't, like all of that, I didn't do that. On my phone. I kept my phone in my pocket. I just walked around. And then when I get home. So I, it does it on its own. Yeah, it does it on its own. You go back to it later and kind of see what you did. It's it's not about being in the game. It's about being active outside and then going back to the game later. So it's just a reward for exercising. I I think, though, yeah, I think in some ways. Sounds okay, like it. You know what? I like. First of all, congratulations to you for looking at the positive for once. I do think that Chubby, your kids could use this game to lose some weight for sure. Well, better than just sitting and playing a video game. At least you're exercising. Yes. Which which I used to say about Pokemon Go, and then I saw how it d had no positive effect on EJ. And then I was like, well, th that's the only positive yeah, I saw. Yeah, but he cheated at it. He got fatter. He cheated at it. With the phone rocker? Well, I bought him that. I enabled yeah. him. I bought him a phone rocker. And then so- Oh, man. He wasn't even like- He plays Pokemon Go the way that I play Wii Bowling, the way that I play Mario Golf. You sit down and you figure out the the least amount of movement you can do to play the game. That's what <laughs> Chunguses do, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, when yeah. I was full Chungus, I system. was playing Wii Tennis and Wii Golf from my Chung chair, <laughs> uh, drinking full-on Lagunitas IPAs and eating Whopper sandwiches from Burger King. 
By the way, um, I stopped myself from saying it because I was like, too mean. Come on. Just mind your business when EJ was in here. And he's like, I got this uh, UM uh, polo uh, when I went down there for the game that let me run the field. And then I looked at it, no. and I'm like, they only had mediums left. Oh, there. There's no way that was a medium. No, I don't know. Know. <laughs> it, was, it was like it was the high polo, and tight. The yeah. polo basically just <laughs> went below his belly button. I thought it was a sports bra. Crap <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are in. It was like a sports and, bra. And I'm like, yeah, you squeezed yourself in there. Oh <laughs> like they God. didn't have any uh, bigger sizes. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I didn't say that. I just said it to everybody. <laughs> I just said it on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's even more insulting saying it in person. So I held my tongue. <laughs> but you just remind me. And then EJ the, should hold polo. his tongue. If he held his tongue, you couldn't get food past it. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Anyway. Um, you know what? You're right. It does make you feel better when you do stuff like that. So uh, Pikmin Bloom. Get on. I'm telling you. It's going to blow up huge. Get I on that Pikmin. But it's, there's nothing fun about that to me. No, but you're going to be doing it anyway. Yes. So load the game. Start your Pikmin and then run around with your kids playing tag. And then later when you guys are laying in bed and you're doing your daddy talks, you can pull <laughs> up your screen and they'll love you. They'll be, oh, he brought a game. He brought the Pikmin Bloom. Oh, we're collecting flowers. Give him the nectar. Give <laughs> the nectar yeah, to the my Pik sons will like it. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. they will. I think they will. Um, I think I know their language, man. I'm a video game guy. I play more video games now than I have in a long time. I bought a plane last night. Come on. $29. You got to, oh, $29? Yeah, it's the most expensive Fancy. one I ever bought. Don't Come tell on. Andrea. Come on. Don't tell you her. You have a, a mental illness. <laughs> it <laughs> you came, have a, it you came have out of the off, man. You can look. It came out of the company PayPal. You, you can got, look. You God got damn. an addiction. It's a Russian MIG fighter. Oh, oh I've I, never had, you know, I don't oh. have a Russian fighter. I have all American planes up to this point. Hold on, I believe this was made in China, though. I took some money initially out of uh, the company PayPal for gambling, yeah, but yeah. I'm winning some back. Uh, I just won uh, $102 yeah, in I'm my survival not. pool. I'm not. I'm just stealing. Uh, <laughs> just you buying. can't even no, win any money. can't even fly in this plane. This plane <laughs> is just zeros and ones inside my computer somewhere. Oh. But it's beautiful. They got the real uh, liveries of like the different, uh, you know, like um, uh, you know, like they got like Navy. They got the Red Hawks for the Marines. It's, it's cool. It's got to be the definition of addiction, right? Because you're buying nonsense and it's giving you a dopamine response. Yeah, it gives me. And a, then you, it, you get it, but it rares off yeah, fast. Ah, yeah, <laughs> like what so a, fast. How like good even, do you feel even, when you buy it? Oh, you feel man. like you're doing something wrong too, right? It's a little naughty. Yeah. It's like when you're driving yeah. uh, away from uh, the Walmart parking lot when you just bought drugs. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> and you're yeah. like, oh, man, I got away with yeah. it. I, I, I can't wait I, to do I these do drugs. I do that when I leave True Leave. <laughs> I leave. When I leave True Leave and take my mask off, I'm like, I just <laughs> broke the law. See, I don't feel it when I do it legally as much because I'm like. Uh, well, you're not as I crazy I just had a full transaction <laughs> yeah, in an yeah, Apple yeah, store, yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, no one cares. <laughs> I got a receipt like, for this. This is not like, you know, when you're in the parking lot, you're like the. You know, the cops are going to pull up next to me and with their guns drawn. You know, I'm like, you were scared. Yeah. It's like cheating on your wife. Uh, the adrenaline uh, oh, makes yeah. it better. But then you're drained <laughs> later. <laughs> then you're dra right? You know what I've noticed in cheating on my wife? The, the things I've noticed in cheating on my wife are how tired you get in the, because of that adrenaline dump. Oh, yeah. Afterwards. Later, she's like, you boy, crash. you're awfully quiet. My wife will be like, boy, you're awfully quiet. I'm like, yeah, I cheated on you. I'm <laughs> tired as hell right now. All oh. this guilt I'm carrying around. Who's the people that cheat and then lay around with their uh, person they cheated with after? I like, do that. Who yeah, lay like, cuddle? Yeah, yeah. You do. Oh, aren't you? It's like, a it's a new cuddle. Right new after, cuddles are fun. Aren't you like? Oh my God! What have no. I done? No, no. New cuddles are fun for a little no, while no, because you're, the, you, nervous, you're stuck in right? that fantasy of starting a new family. I'm like, I'm gonna start a new family <laughs> with this girl. I'm gonna finally have some kids I care about. Are you nervous about getting caught? And no. you're like, what have I done? Samantha. That's the easy part uh -huh. is not getting caught. What's in Yahoo News? <laughs> 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 well, on Twitter, Fresh from the news on Twitter desk. News, I Twitter found news. out that uh, four days ago, DJ Khaled uh, posted a video of him trying to play guitar. Okay. Um, and people really trashed him. Uh, I have not watched the video, but I can only imagine. He didn't, you know, we brought him up before and you said, I think you said he was on a Weight Watcher situation. Yeah, it does not look like he has lost any no. weight, right? Yeah, yeah. No. He's too much of a narcissist. God, when I, put, I went to put this video up, I thought it was a CBE group for a second. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. like, who is this? So I was like, I know this guy. Also, doesn't that Bob Marley <laughs> graphic look a little small for that t-shirt? Yeah, well, it's his t-shirt is very large. 
It's a large T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but shouldn't they f- confirm? Like, yeah, you gotta make the graphic, the graphic bigger, yeah. to oh, the no. shirt. No, it's no, like no. it's like he ordered that online and then he, yeah. or from the cheap. Uh, yeah, like spread shirt. He didn't actually expand the image. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, where are you ordering this from? Where'd you get that zazzle? <laughs> so, what is this? Um, Should I play this? There's yeah, one? let's see how. Uh, All right, this okay. is DJ Khaled playing guitar. Get a close up. Get a close up. Get a close up of the case. The guitar. Oh, that's not okay. Oh, it was so he, a case. Bu- he got it. Saying, and a special note from the Marley family. Shout out to the Marley. Melissa, can you read this for me? Can you read this to the world, please? Okay. Um, DJ Khaled, we are excited to share this new guitar with you. As someone who has an appreciation for Bob Marley's life and music, we want you to be one of the first. Wait, why did he have his housekeeper read that? Is that like <laughs> to belittle her in some way, right? He can't read very well. No, but that yeah. was... I, I do that was to that you. To I do that down? with you. That's, I'm like, hey, read this literally half of the comments on Twitter is he made her read it because he can't read. Yeah, Those yeah, are yeah. literally... See, I believe <laughs> that. No, I thought it was like a power thing and it pissed me oh, off. Probably. Also, I didn't like that. I don't like, like, hey, get over here and read this. You no. read this for read me. Read this to the world. You read it, you also, fat ass. <laughs> also, you make your housekeeper wear a mask on the Jesus. inside while she's cleaning. Jesus. Like, come on. Guy. Let her, you know. Or is that his wife? I don't know. I don't know who she is. Yeah, yeah, to play the Gildy 20 Marley based on Bob's at home songwriting guitar from 56 Hope Road. This guitar inspired songs that help unite the world. And Who makes the guitar? I didn't know they did it. That's insulting. Okay, he's trolling. What the he's, hell? He's just trolling. Yep, that's 100% a troll. He just did that to see hate. Yes, yeah, 100% yeah. Percent knows what, what he's doing. What an idiot. Yeah. Yep. He, he's like, I'm playing, I'm horribly playing Bob Marley's guitar. Yeah, that, disrespectful. That I shouldn't even own yeah. because I'm sure a fan that appreciated Bob Marley more than DJ Khaled would well, appreciate that. But. I think this is a mass-produced oh, signature okay, okay. guitar because the case was like a Bob Marley themed. Like, I okay, think it's it wasn't signature. his actual, yeah. okay. I don't believe so. And then they, so they ship it to <laughs> him as a gift saying, hey, we got <laughs> this. All right, all right, yeah, right. it's fine. Right. This is how uh, rumors start. And then you get out the new thing and you're like, here you go. And then he, he does that because he knows beyond a shadow of a doubt that people will put uh, it on the front page of every music thing and yeah. then hate on him and he'll be like there's my face on the front page of every music publication yeah. look what I did I'm very powerful it's, politicians do this too yeah yeah it's kind of what everybody does now if they don't care about hate I don't like, do this yeah I don't it's not fun for me to to look as I if can, I'm disrespecting Bob Marley's <laughs> signature guitar that I was gifted by the Marley family it's stupid you look like an idiot when you do that I could do it because I don't care if people like hate it. I wouldn't even see it, but it's just so cheesy. I couldn't bring Follow myself to do it. it. Yeah, 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 because it's it's unauthentic, and you're just doing it to troll. And I hate that. Yeah, like dicks don't have any. There's no repercussions, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got like like now we don't even turn our back on the people that do things just be, for nothing. Like we sometimes we herald those people, right? In some worlds, there are YouTube channels where the person on the YouTube channel is really, if you if you write it down, is the definition of a troll, right? Yes. Oh, but they have been heralded to the point of being like legendary or current legendary entertainment. That's weird. Well, then there are followers expecting the troll, and then they still get hate, and the followers that that are now in on the joke get a kick out of them trolling, right? Right. So they, like, so right. they are now in on the know, troll's guys, joke. I heard he was the best, so yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think he's trolling. Yeah, yeah. I, I I even think like when he did that radio interview where he's like I uh I don't go down. No, there's a lot of guys like that. There is it, there is, but I. I, I think they think it's like a manly thing of like, I don't do that, which is it's like absurd. I I've, I've heard that, yes. Yeah, I don't yeah. change diapers. It's like that, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. I, although That's weird. Yeah. I, I kind although of- Although I don't like changing diapers. <laughs> I will say if I well, had to does? choose- yeah. No, I'm just Gross. saying, <laughs> if I had to choose, it's going to be the other thing all day, not the diaper. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, even the other thing, it's like one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of good. You're too long. It's like yeah, actually it's a marathon. You're uh, like, yeah. oh, my God, God too much. Geez, but it's, <laughs> who wants to do anything for that long? <laughs> yeah. But um, I. Like, what is this? Ishtar? This is too long. I kind of think DJ Khaled has adopted that troll mentality of like whatever. I can manipulate the media and to get my name out there. And any press is good press. I'm smart. I'm a. Uh, media genius I'll, I'll say the thing uh the outlandish thing about the not going down uh yeah because i like the attention i it, it'll give me attention yeah. i think th- I, He's a I just feel person. there's a little bit of, of that he's you know? an odd hybrid person like he looks like a baby seal 
man. Like, yeah. He looks like a baby seal man. I feel like he's smart enough to be aware of that I trick. don't find him as a smart person. I don't think he's necessarily... It depends. It's all, Being smart is subjective because you could be smart in many different ways, but I think he's smart enough to manipulate the media in that way, in a trolling manner, which is not that smart. I mean, anybody could do it. You just have to you be clear, as, as famous as him and say outlandish things. Okay, so we all have agreed, chat room included, and we're live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tom and Dan live. Monday through Friday, you can check us out starting around 10.30 a.m. on the old Twitch. Um... Chat room uh, agreed as well. Do you check with the Marley family before you do this? Because obviously this is just a piece of advertising for the guitar and everything. Or do you just do it because you know your brand and you know it works? Because see, to me, the reason I wouldn't do that isn't because I don't like to troll or be funny or whatever. Pretending that you don't know how to play guitar, I guess in some ways could be kind of funny or entertaining. To me, what doesn't sit right with this is that you were gifted something and then later you're using it to sound as if you have no business having it. So it's kind of disrespectful if they're releasing this guitar truly to commemorate the death of Bob Marley, whatever, and it's a signature model, I would imagine you'd put a little more respect on it than that. But, I would personally. But his mentality, which I agree with, by the way, is that he gave the Marley family more publicity than anybody else could by well, he doing did. this. He did. He did, yes. I'm, that's, that's what yeah. I'm saying is, do you yeah. check with them before you do that or you no, just do no. it? You do it and you're like, thank you. Like, and are they happy that he did that? Yeah, okay. yeah, because he probably sold an insane amount of guitars because this is being talked about, it's being spread around. Yeah. And they're okay. Ha- they're hating on DJ Khaled. I'm just talking but, it out. But all also seeing the Marley, they didn't even know that existed, and they're like, I'll buy that. You know what I'm saying? And I'll like, play it better than him. It's just yeah. publicity for them, and he knows, and that's why he's doing it. It was his personal chef, by the way, that read that note. Yeah, I knew it was somebody that worked for him, because he had her in like, uh, he had her in like one of those... Um, what a Duluth Trading Company uh, aprons. <laughs> aprons yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Man, having a personal chef would be sweet. I think right? chef would be nice. Chef over housekeeper, I think. Yeah, same. It would help my life better. Although, I don't know. I like cooking. I like yeah, cooking but, too, but I like cooking fat ass stuff. I almost cursed. I like cooking fat ass stuff. I don't like yeah. cooking health food. I need a chef that knows all the techniques that can cook me healthy food that tastes amazing. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And that's what obviously is yes, not yes, yes, yes. It's not health. <laughs> DJ Khaled excited. is still fat. Uh, but well, he ain't eating health food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing he doesn't eat is. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Have like. Be, that's be an a, easy joke, right? Like, <laughs> The, the chef thing, how, like, are they, do they come at like eight in the morning and stay till five? How Some does it work? Live Some of them are living in the, the mansion. Depends, yeah. Yeah. Some of them, it, it appears as if she might have a room or a place on property where she goes back to and then whenever he needs a snack, he just rings her up and she's always on call. So I'm thinking about. That's dope, by the way, when you're like, the president has that. So like, if you want cookies. Whatever you want. Joe no, Biden, right. Donald Trump, whatever. You, John, Donald Trump, middle of the night, could be like, I want chocolate chip cookies. And then no, somebody bacon, down yeah. there will bake you cookies. That is awesome. I think that's better than made. Yes, it and is. And cleaning, uh, like vacuuming, cleaning, you know, full, even doing laundry. I would take chef, I think, tops everybody, man. Personal <laughs> trainer, too, is great. Yeah, but the chef thing, chef there's so is... many more options. The personal trainer thing can kind of be a bummer. You're like, oh, God, they're coming yeah, today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're never going to be like, oh, my chef is going to cook me some delicious, healthy meal. Like, you know, um, I'll, my neighbor does meal prep uh, service for wrestlers and stuff. And, like, she's got the whole thing going on with uh, you sign up for a monthly meal That's prep. That's cool. Why don't you do it? Deliver it. And I'm oh, thinking about expensive. it. It is expensive, but so is buying stuff from Publix every day. That's uh, true. You know, Very so, expensive. and I can't. Tell her advertising, get us uh, fed for free. There was a problem with that. Well, I thought about going that route, but I don't want to get into any awkward business thing with my neighbor that I have to see her every day. Yeah. You know, oh, do it, do it. It's not my neighbor. No. <laughs> well, that's, I, so I'm and just, the chances of it not working are very high. <laughs> I just uh, most of the people that listen to us are not concerned about nutrition. That's a yeah, nice way of saying it. I just want to pay for it and uh, and then get it. Like, they'll meal prep Monday through Friday and then, like one lunch meal because that's all I need. I get the smoothie and then one lunch meal instead of buying it at a public and I'm thinking about pulling the trigger, Do but it. it is expensive. Yeah, it is. So, wh- how expensive are we talking? You probably it's less than what I spent at Publix. Well, so, then, oh, then it's do fine. it. Yeah, then you got to do it. Once you sign up for it, it's a one lump sum, and me, this is a bad at life mentality. Me doing it every day and be like, ah, oh, I'll get it tomorrow. Like, I, yeah, I just, yeah. it's really, <laughs> this is how bad at life I am, and a lot of people do this. Is that I show? Hey, at least you're honest. 
I, I show up to work and then I'm like, and then you're like, I'm going to Publix. I'm like, oh, God, just give me a salad. Uh, tomorrow I'll do it. Like, I keep telling myself tomorrow I'll do it. And the meal prep is basically giving up and being like, that you're too, you're a lazy POS. But, the, you, but you, you can't cook your own stuff. But you are actually not because you are prepping, right? Well, I'm paying probably more than I should. At, but you're paying more than you should at Publix, $10 a day. Yes, but if I do it every day, <laughs> then I trick myself and be like, uh, tomorrow I'll change my Here's ways. Here's what's going to happen, though. <laughs> Even if you did sign up for this meal prep, unless I like someone physically brought it here for you, yeah. you'd forget it at home anyway. Yeah, or leave it in your car, and then you'll have a hundred <laughs> stinky uh, healthy meals in the I, back of your truck. I think I can get into the routine of just taking it before I take the kids to school. I'll, I'll forget it. For like days and days, but once I get into that routine, I, I'll I'll finally get it. But you've kind of trained me. I've I've gotten to a point like recently where I'm dialing in my fitness again, and now like my breakfasts and my lunches are just boring and crappy, and they're just the same thing. And it's like a protein bar or like a yeah. yeah. Thing. And then my dinners are like last night was just uh, like uh, pork chop, like lean pork, and uh, just yeah. a giant hunk of broccoli. It is disgusting. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got. You just have to yeah, succumb just, to eating is not going to be uh, pleasurable. pleasurable. It's, it's just, just fuel. Now, every but you could treat yourself every once in a while or mm-hmm. like weekends. I did. Stuff I got a them. peanut butter milkshake at uh, at old Dairy Queen. Uh, When's the last time you guys had a milkshake? I don't I ever don't. really get milkshakes. Me neither. Right? I don't eat sweets or anything. Me, me neither. Got it. Well, now that I, now I'm sweet crazy because I'm like not, not as much sugar in my body. But I got a peanut butter milkshake. Haven't had a milkshake in a year. It was amazing. Yeah, Milkshakes yeah. are underrated. People forget yeah. about the convenience of a milkshake. And here's a parenting tip. If your kid wants a mint chocolate chip ice cream or a mint chocolate chip blizzard, you can also get them a mint chocolate chip milkshake and it stays in the cup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, amazing. Cups are way better than cones. Um, well, yeah, less 100%, messy. 100%. Uh, 100%. Uh, but you make the mistake as a parent multiple times of getting the cone, and cone. then it just uh, melts all over. They don't even pass it up. <laughs> it's like, there's no I'm like, get of, it, get no, it! Yeah, there's no sense of urgency whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, ah, I'm like, okay, yeah. well, I just spill it everywhere. But I do wish that I was like a kid because I get, okay, you. this is where I, I'll get, I'm going to help you out. I'm gonna, this is where I go crazy. Okay. I get, like a level six or seven anxiety from a drip on my ice cream cone. Oh, oh yeah. You that's know what I mean? Of, like yeah, yeah. if it's starting to drip or like it's, it, it gives me anxiety. There are certain yeah. foods I can't eat because they give me anxiety. A meatball sub with too much marinara sauce on it cannot eat it. <laughs> too much anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Any sub that's over stuffed. I'll, I'll single out a, a rest. There's a restaurant here in town. I won't say who they are, but they make really good sandwiches, but they're overstuffed sandwiches, right? I love their sandwiches, but I can't eat there because their sandwiches are problematic. They're too stuffed. It's, yeah. It gives me anxiety. There's too much on it. I got to kidnap you to reset your anxiety. <laughs> Here we go again with the kidnap. No, I have to reset your anxiety meter. It's like, it's like a, a dripping ice cream cone shouldn't like, give you crippling anxiety. No, you know what I mean, though? No, because no. it's just like, it's like I, I got the sub and I'm holding it and I'm like, there's no integrity. The bread is, the meatballs are-, are, are Yeah, it's messy. The meatballs are ro- red hot and they're, they're rocketing through the bread. I can feel them falling <laughs> through the bread. <laughs> They're not falling through. I can feel them. I can feel every little bit of bread fiber. Like I can, it's like the floor of uh, uh, Squid Games, the glass <laughs> floor. I can feel it collapsing. What else is in Yahoo News? Oh, I don't know. I didn't pull any of this. Oh, oh, God, I didn't, we, no. You literally didn't tell me we were doing this as a bit until right before we started recording. Well, that's what happened. He shouted Yahoo News was Sam. <laughs> okay, I'll pull up Yahoo News. Uh, uh, apparently, Aaron Rodgers lied about getting vaccinated. Oh, he oh. did. Oh, my God. He it's did? W- weird. Because that's he, what they're reporting. I bet you picked that up from hanging out with Danica Patrick. It's, it, that, did he date Danica Patrick for he a He did, yeah. yeah. That will do two things, um, which is weird. Uh, his base of Green Bay fans who now dislike him because he's leaving next year. They will year. suddenly love him. Yeah, they <laughs> like him. And then all his L.A., like his wife's an actress <laughs> oh, and all the L.A. And they, they don't like it. Like, you I screwed yourself. People are saying that he did it on purpose to get COVID so they didn't have to actually play. 
There's all kind of rumors swirling around. <laughs> Why would I mean, you do this that? Guy, this you still a, get paid, right? This guy is, yeah, but he is goofing around crazy, right? you just right? don't have to play some, you sit down, what, what is it, uh, is it 10 days or 10 games? 10 days. 10 gotta days. Be, yeah. yeah, yeah, so usually it's just one week. 10 um, games would be terrifying. I know. <laughs> be there, bad. There Not be, like they're doing great, right? It would be, no. Oh, they okay. are doing great. Um, they're actually, they had a fir- they're playoff the fir- bound. Their first game was a little little rough. Yeah, but, um, you know, they've won seven in a row, and they're playing the Chiefs, uh, which is a huge game for them, and this is the worst possible way or time to be out because you have a real chance of winning uh, this game against the Chiefs because the Chiefs look horrible this year. So by Aaron Rodgers leaving, by the way, it blows up my teaser, too, because I got the uh, Green Bay plus two and a half, and I teased them up to plus eight and a half, and I was so happy, and I was bragging about this to all my gambling friends. I'm like, look what I got. I got this teaser before the Chiefs uh, stunk, it, stunk it up, and it oh, went down to bad. even, and now uh, Aaron Rodgers is out. It screwed That's my fun. entire thing. I know. but Interesting. I, I, anyway, um, it's... Uh, uh, Ghost of a new bull in our Twitch chat room with a bit of an update. He said he didn't lie. I think he said he met, quote, met the immunization requirements of the NFL, which apparently doesn't mean specifically vaccination. Well, what does that mean? Isn't like that you just... had COVID at once time yeah. before, so you're less likely or something. I don't know. Um, no idea. It's uh, interesting that he would, you know, seems like he's a businessman. He would just do it for the business of it. Um, anyway. Oh. All right. Let's take a break. Bye. Welcome back to a Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. So... You're in the market for some overalls. Okay, well, there's a story behind it. People just aren't normally in the market for overalls, and I understand that the style cues of overalls, is you have to be a, I believe, a creature person in order to pull off overalls. Hmm. Uh, That's very insulting to Big Ten. Well, I mean, I think... Also Tim, very accurate. No, but I think Tim knows. He's even said this before. He's like, you know, baby, you know, you got the tattoos. And you got the, you know, you lid on, you wear the hats and everything, and you could pull off the overalls, you know, because, you know, you got the look. That's he, yeah, that's yeah, actually yeah. almost a perfect quote. Uh, so anyway, yes, I am in the market for overalls, but I really don't know which way to go. And the reason I'm, I'm, I'm said, you know, like I'm sad and now said purchasing these overalls is because my wife threw out my goddamn overalls. She hates them. And 10 years ago, when I was moving to Baldwin Park, my wife was going through the closets and getting rid of stuff, and I've never really had something. It's the old, um, it's, a, it's a stereotype. It's the old, the mom of the house threw out the dad's coach's shorts because his balls would hang out of them. It's that old thing, right? Yeah. The mom, the, the matriarch, always finds the most comfortable article of clothing that the man has and traditionally throws it out as a sign of power. And uh, back in the old she days, back in the old days, you could retaliate for doing so, but now you can't. Yeah. And she says it's kick because, the dog or something, yeah. you know. Like, they, I think, I feel like the wives throw away our favorite clothes. They say it's because it's stupid. They look stupid and it's embarrassing. This is foreign to my household. Yeah, oh, she, yeah. she doesn't do this. We don't mess with each other's clothes. Yeah, she doesn't do this. Uh, oh, you don't. She told me that this morning. I didn't even believe her. I'm like, you're a liar. Why would I? Why do I care? I, that's a great question. Maybe you're an evolved human being. I give you nothing but heaping helps of... of well, it's not mine to throw away. I understand well, that. It, what, and the fact that you recognize if that... If he had thrown away something of mine, it would be a problem. How would you feel if your husband went into your garage and found a trash bag filled with your favorite jeans, your bongo jeans, and threw them out? But they had oil I'd be fine with them because they're in a garbage and, bag in the garage. Yeah, but you put them in there so you had all your bongos in one spot. It's it, usually the stereotype That's goes insane. like this: is that uh, a husband or wife? It's usually coaches' shorts. It's they they keep something around and they keep it in the rotation of what they wear because of nostalgia, because it's comfortable, whatever they want. My but dad it's had green bike coaches' shorts, double snap on the top. He wore them when he played softball. They were his softball yep. shorts, but he loved them. But they got a little loose fitting and they got a hole in the crotch, so my mom threw them out. But then. There, it turns into this weird bullying thing where the husband starts to wear the thing that the wife hates the most more, more yeah. just to bully or troll the wife. I did this with my big rig shirt. Yes. I've talked about it a lot of times. So I, you buy things that she will hate just so she will throw them away. No, 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 no. Well, you she wear always... the things that she hates in order to drive her crazy. She throws it away. You pull it out of the trash. It's a love language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You pull it's, it out of the trash. Insanity. You wear okay. it. You go to the mall. You're wearing it. You're it's wearing pure it. pure insanity. You threaten to wear it to like family reunions and stuff. And then you yeah. do. You have to follow through so she knows that you're not full of BS. Now, 
usually they're big talking. They're like, I'm going to throw this away one day and then never do. Yeah. Your wife actually took the next step and threw she your doesn't, overall I don't away. know if you know this. She's not a big talker. Yeah, she's yeah. a big doer. Mm. She does things. That's her job. Her, her so business she, is, is handling stuff. She must know you didn't really like the overalls, because uh, if you if it was like your prized possession overalls, I doubt she would have thrown it away. Well, the, here's the interesting thing about overalls, especially being a Florida man that loves overalls. You you don't get very many opportunities unless they're your main clothing to wear them. So like Big Tim, sure, he but he is it's made part of his costume exactly. It's part of his everyday uniform. For me, overalls were a treat. So I go into my closet. We had built-ins, which, by the way, I enjoy built-ins. I know that a lot of people hate them, but having your closet built into the wall just saves space. It's awesome. Anyway, go into my built-in. Can't find them. Where are my overalls? Where'd they go? I, ha- I could have sworn I had a pair. Where are they? Liberty overalls, the green tag. Where are my o- Honey, where are my overalls? Nothing. Honey! Oh, yeah. I threw them out. Now I've n- gone. I saw mm-hmm. you. I've seen you wear overalls one time in my life. So maybe that's she's like you never wear them. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a treat. You're hoarding the overalls. What had to be? Typically, it would have to be cold. I have short overalls, so I don't think I can pull those off. I saw a lot of overalls this past week. Can I do short overalls? Is that a thing now? You'd have to get them a certain length because if you went too well, help me. long of a short, mm-hmm. then you look yeah. like Chucky. I'm standing here <laughs> hat in hand to you. Help me. Help you me. You could get... do short, but they got to be real short. They got to be chubby short. Oh, so tiny. Yeah. I don't that's know. That's novelty. I think that's, I don't think that's well, then you gotta, then go. then go full pants then. Yeah, I want to go pants. Yeah. I think I'm going to go pant. Now, I've had some people say I should go for the call, call, call heart, car heart, car heart overalls, call heart. Is that a brand? Yeah. Carhartt. Carhartt. I think it's Carhartt. I'm not a farming man. I'm not a hunting man. I mean, I appreciate those things, and that's not my my lane. I've never in my entire life worn a pair of overalls. Ever. I've never put them on. Not even as a child? Not even as a costume. No, it's a child thing, right? It's no, an old man. Hold on, thing. Maybe. You're a working man. Well, I, mean, I, I you know it's farmer. I lied. I lied. I, I think had it's old man child thing. Oshkosh Pagosh. Yes. Overalls when I was like, uh, I'm a little kid. Well, this guy out here, this the the dumb old man that, that we see every day, he wears overalls every day. Yep, he sure does. And he looks so happy. Should I get white? They're Should comfy, I get painters? I Should I get white painters overall? Okay, here are my choices. I'll throw them out. Go here. khaki. I can go the brown Carhartt, like the traditional, like I believe that's a duck canvas. I can go that brown. Yeah, yeah. duck bib. I can go black. I can go blue. I like think denim. They, they, uh, and then I can go with, like all variations of denim. They seem too utility for me. Because I'm you, too sedentary. Well, well, well. At least you won't have your shorts falling off your ass like you do now, because you guys refuse to wear a belt. Well, oh, yeah. I don't think a belt is proper when the belt, the width of the belt, is longer than the width of the short. My shorts are so small that if I put a belt on, then I'm just wearing a belt over my shorts. And th- and that's because. Um, and these are my shorties today. Today I'm running my what I like to call my pube catchers. Like these, these right here are literally two centimeters off the balls. Come like on. I mean, I got a. It's it's a dangerous game I'm playing down here today. Because overalls, they're for the working man and woman. I don't think they are. Train I think conductors. They, I think they farmers, became that. Painters. I, th- I think they painters. became that. But I think everybody can enjoy the grace that is overalls. I think it's for every, I think it's the every person. No, I think they started as working man and then became fashion. I bet you, like most but things, they probably fashion, started right? in the military. They look goofy. Um, so I think they look cool. They're super cute ones for girls. Like, I think if I had those on with just like a T-shirt, yeah. I think people look at me and they're like, well, there's a guy that is, is, takes his podcasting seriously. That's a man no. that... Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's all I'm going to wear. I'm going to get five pairs Monday through Friday. Overall, overall, overall. Two overalls. Now, I enjoy the not having to think about what you have to put on and just wearing overalls. One pair day. of brown. Steve Could Jobs. go back to jumpsuit. I wanted, to, I wanted all of us to wear jumpsuits. I'm in for that, You've, for sure. I, oh, you are? Yeah. Butler voted it down because he likes to mix and match his footwear with his shirts and his little... We'll like, have to get short sleeve and long sleeve for the summers. He... <laughs> The jumpsuit. I wore a jumpsuit for the Halloween costume. And it's a better Myers. way to live. No pockets. 
No uh, pockets. So well, you're like a lady out there. No, well, uh, the, I put my well, cell phone in my underwear. I was saying the jumpsuit that I had had no pockets, and and I had to uh, put my wallet and keys around uh, your waistband and your boxers. <laughs> well, no, in like uh, the I have this uh, backpack cooler that has like a uh, stomach. Oh, your purse. Uh, you uh, had to put yeah. it in your purse. It's I had to put it in my purse. purse. That's fine. <laughs> so if you uh, if you have a jumpsuit, you need pockets in your jumpsuit. That's but say overalls have multiple pockets. In yes. fact, the overalls I'm looking at these Carhartts, they have engineered the front of them to have an iPhone pocket, like it fits perfectly for your iPhone. I can be a digital farmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a digital farmer. That's uh, what I do. I farm words on the internet. But we can all agree that you look a little goofy in overalls, right? Are you saying that the only I do because of my height? No, no. Because I'm like, sure. Am I? Do anybody, I look? It's like you. Like, why are you wearing that costume? That's what. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Because Big, Big Tim gets, gets away with it because it's part of his character. Okay. Because I am disfigured yes. and handicapped with my height. Yes. Um, legally, I think I. If I apply, I, be, I think I could get a handi- all, a part like a parking pass. Write that down for Mo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, apply. For Seriously, a I, pass. I'm like be, take yeah, take advantage of everything. Like, well, Andrew, I'm kind of mentally handicapped. Can I get my parking pass? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do it together. Okay. We'll do it together. Right we'll do like medical down. marijuana. They don't deny you. <laughs> it's just like medical marijuana. You go in there, you're like, I'm short. They're like, yeah, yeah, disfigured. Hey, write it down. You don't have to prove it, right? It's like, do you? What is it just like the service animal? You just apply for it online yeah. and you get one? They don't make it all like take a photo holding a USA Today in your wheelchair. They don't make you do that. Yeah. <laughs> do they make like, yeah, nah. like what? Is it just uh-uh. an online thing? Not I feel thing. like more people would scam the system yeah, or same, yeah. back to my own. I feel like you need a Sorry. doctor's note at the very least, right? Do overalls oh, help me or hurt me as a as a disfigured shortman? I think they're gonna hurt you. Really? I yeah. thought it would make me I thought it would like it's like putting overalls on a doll. It's Hold like on. everybody loves a doll with overalls on it. So you know, like... Most the, dolls, in fact, boy dolls, come with overalls. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You can't. You can't. But do you want to look like a doll? I already do. <laughs> I already... Okay. I look like an alcoholic doll. <laughs> Everyone knows that. See... Disfigured alcoholic doll. You know the the Saturday Night Live bit where the, the guy of limited intelligence is t- too strong for his own good and he kills all the animals he's trying to pet? Oh, like of mice and men. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Lenny. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he wears overalls a lot. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like that. You know, there's a little bit of that. Have hipsters and millennials worn overalls enough to make it okay for me to yes. wear them? And they're a That's fashion thing. That's what I'm thing? telling you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there were tons of overalls this weekend. Okay. It's a thing. Well, okay. No, hold on. That goes too far. If I wear Carhartt overalls, will I look like I'm a tryhard trying to be cool? Because, uh, uh, trust me, yeah. I do not want to be cool. I know I'm not. I literally just like the way that overalls feel. Yeah, like if you came in here smoking a pipe with a monocle, <laughs> you know, I'm like, come on, get that. I'll slap it out of your eye. Because I'll be like, yeah, you can't, you know, you don't do that. That's, a, you know, and so I feel like the overalls is a little like, so hey, I can't, look at so me. It, I can't get them then, is what you're saying. You can. You, can, you will get made fun of. You can do it, but you have to do something, some hard work. Because like, there's two things I want. You have to lift are, something. You can do it if you just don't care what other people think. There, are, I, was, I was gonna say two things. There are three things that I'm in the market for as statement pieces for my life. One is overalls. Number two is I want a flat brim, like a wide. Uh, I'm a mm. genuine article American singer songwriter hat. Yep. I want one of those. And okay. I also want a ginormous statement ring to wear on one of my hands. Yeah. These are three are, things I want. Um, <laughs> no, but I won't wear them at all the same time. You okay. can't do that. Okay, because the world would implode. No, no, no. You wear Those the, and the Crocs. No, 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 no. Crocs are their own <laughs> statement piece. I'm always jealous of like people in this world, like a Cam Newton. Is, yes. You know, I'm like, what are freedom. you doing? It's like, freedom. You're, like, you're doing what they want. It. You're expressing yourself. But you already <laughs> do it. I hate expressing no, myself. No, but you, yeah, but you do it by not expressing yourself. It's almost like those guys that say, I got no game, but they're so good with the ladies. You're like, yeah, your game is to have no game. I hate those guys. I don't know if I've met one of those guys. Yeah. Usually when they say that, they don't have game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, but I see Maybe what Daniel's saying. Guy. But that's part of being naturally cool. I might be that guy. Mm, okay. You, you have to be naturally cool. You have to not to care. To pull off. It's just confidence and not caring. You have one of each. Which you don't have, but you think you have. His son has it. Max has it Max naturally. Max has it. I'm not that. Max can put his hands in his pockets, and instantly he goes from a three to an 11 and cool. Yeah. Like, he just only- He can wear overalls. Tommy, can't, he looks like a scarecrow, stick man. Yeah. Like, oh, Ooh. God, they're going to be 
beat you up. You know what's funny is that you you summed up this whole entire topic perfectly. If we put Max in overalls and put Tommy in overalls, yeah. and they look exactly Only as certain alike, people can pull it off. They yeah. will yeah. they yeah. will receive the love of overalls in different ways. Tommy will look yeah. like a cosmo- yeah, costume. The, the world will beat Tommy up and look at Max. And, and be Max, like, that looks, guy, yeah. he's got oh, the guts. Is he a rapper? What is that guy? He's <laughs> yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. It all has and to. He be- released a single on Spotify. Like he looks like a cool dude. The overalls are inside you. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Write that like, down. Only Inside. Inner rolls. Inner rolls. Inner rolls. <laughs> like Tom and Dan inner rolls. It's the overalls for your innards. Like Oof. only the chosen <laughs> ones can pull the sword out of the stone. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. And you never know until you put them on and then the world knows. And now oh, how do I how do I rock my spindles? Is that what they're What's called? What's that? The spindles. What are these things called? The, the straps. The, uh, <laughs> my, 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 um, I don't know what those things are called. My lifters. It's just uh, my suspender, right? Oh, yeah. is that what they're my? Do it's I do form I of suspender? Straps. Right? Do I, I leave know. one off and one on? Like salt and pepper? <laughs> I believe no. Was it salt and pepper? <laughs> I think so. Right? It was like yeah, like early nineties hip hop. Yeah. Crisscross? No, they wore ba- things well, backwards. Yeah. Also the. Salt and Pepper, the the you know you. I thought that was TLC. Oh uh, TLC, You're I think getting yeah, it all mixed up. The '90s were the reinsurgence of overalls and like it being cool for a small. I mean, Tupac wear overalls. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, Tupac. So wore. how are you guys talking me about yeah, overalls? Then, if Tupac can wear overalls, then they're they're epically cool. No, but that and if again, you, it if, depends on who you are. If you were '96, I'm Orlando's Tupac of <laughs> talk radio. They okay. know that. That's what I'm called. <laughs> In case, I, I may be mistaken, yeah. but I have heard myself at least three or four times referred to as Orlando's Talk Radio Tupac. I've heard that. You are appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> Dear mom. <laughs> have you ever heard that song? It's yeah. like, I don't think any, like, like you, because Tupac was considered, like, a, a hardcore gangster, right, at the time? Yes, but he also, he's like, knew poet. ballet. He's so. a street, no, I know, he's yeah, a yeah, street but poet. That was a, a part, poet. That was a part that, it, like... Back then, it was like the perception is reality. He was more of an artist than he was hardcore gangster, but he- He was a street poet. You had to pull off hardcore gangster at that particular time. I like the, the way the, you activate your hips and push your ass out. Got a blank wanting it so bad, I'm about to pass out. Yeah. I'm the same. That is street poetry. Like, no one questioned it with the love song to his uh, mom, like, you appreciate <laughs> Like, we yeah. appreciate you, mom. It's like, well, that's kind of song. Fun fact. <laughs> That <laughs> entire song, both of his spindles <laughs> strapped on. But real both men in hip hop always take care of their mamas. Yes. Yeah, that's that, true. That I they guess. always yes. sing about that's it. True. You know who else takes care of their mama? Big Frida. Yeah. Big Frida takes care of her mama. You like Big Frida? I don't know who that is. I'm oh, glad you at least admit it. Allow me, sir. Um, this is the Big Frida's awesome. Big Frida mm-hmm. is Big a, Frida? Yeah, Big Frida <laughs> is, I believe, a Nolens mm-hmm. uh, music artist. And it is a specific type of music. Is it called Bounce? Yes. And Tom, this yeah. and it goes. It's it's like let me see, I'm gonna find some Big Frida for you. And it it uh there's a bounce to it. In fact, my dream would be for you to dance to Big Frida. Uh, can I play it? No, it's explicit. I think I can play this one. Play this one here. See if this one goes here. Here's some big Frida. Okay, here we go. All right, the ba- the w- feel the the way the beat goes. And you're just shaking the whole time, and your butt just goes like that. It's like that. You better. Yeah, it's that. Big Frida. And your ass is just and you just get on the stage and you put your hands on things and you just ding 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 ding, and that's it. That's it. My frog ass does not do any dancing. Here, it's stiff. We, Ooh, you and I, and stiff. you and I both have, and I just noticed mine yesterday. I'm starting to get a melted candle ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? That happens. Yeah, it's where a droopy it's old where, man ass. At one time, I had a tight. I mean, that thing was yeah. ready for some overalls. You need and, to get some squat. Plastic and, surgery. I need no. Oh, pl- is the Madonna. The the skin is too worn out from sitting down uh, billions of times, right? Like, yeah. so my ass now the cheeks, it's melting the ch- the the gluteus parts have um deteriorated got, det- and they've fallen into the bottom mm. it's like an old pillow <laughs> jesus it, like it's like an old pillow where the the, uh. the stuffing inside starts to separate it loses all integrity yeah 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 
When you get old, you turn disgusting. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Am I, are you telling me how you feel in your core? I'm even just if telling you how I feel. Even if you're skinny, look at Iggy Pop. Disgusting. Yeah, yeah. His, he's like a melted candle. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it, you're just dying. And it's like, wow, you're disgusting. <laughs> your yeah. body is disgusting. So, of course, I want overalls. I'm not going to walk around nude. Yeah, yeah. That's a man. You, I mean. I hate walking around nude now. I'm going to get plastic surgery, I think. You know, every, what are you morning, gonna get? <laughs> every know. morning when I wake up, my stomach has a, it's a different shape. That's not good, right? That means organs are swelling, contracting. It just, I don't know what the hell's going on in there. It's just you're becoming old and disgusting. Um, Thank you. The uh, <laughs> the people that get the plastic surgery... Look, I want to get it I don't early. Know, I'm not a, I don't know any of his business, but I... The Mark Merrow, right? You see him, and I think he's in his, like, uh, uh, mid-60s. 60s, like, yeah. He just turned Middle 65 60s, or whatever. Yeah. Now, and he did a, I saw him do it, uh, uh, he did the marrow salt off of a boat ramp into, yeah, yeah. or like a boat uh, uh, dock into the water. And you eventually, you turn into a lion, like I said, but <laughs> it's better than turning into Disgusto, <laughs> yeah. Barfo, yeah. right? <laughs> like, like, you'd rather be a lion than disgusting, but... Well, in some cultures, they say, I'd rather be a lion than anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, your lips... You know what I mean? Sweat, like, yeah, your who's face the king is, of the jungle? The lion. You're like, why is your face so puffy? He's like, oh, uh, that's what it takes. I, like, you just got a puffy I out your face. I got surgery. Eventually, I'll become full lion. Mm. It's a way to, like, smooth out the wrinkles, obviously, the mm. Botox why, and the stretching. Why and do you always take on a feline? Is it because everything pulls back and yeah. then eventually yeah. you just have fangs and a cat nose? It, mm-hmm. it Well, pulls back and gets puffier, so your lips and your cheeks are puffy. Pulled Back. From the boot, uh, cool. botox, <laughs> the <Yeah>. botox, <laughs> <laughs> the botox, and then it's like, I mean, no offense, like uh, carrot top, kind of liony, uh, Mark Marrow. I'm trying to think of other lions out there. You There's see a them. lot of lions. women lions. Um, what's her name? They're Tigresses, I call. Famous them. for uh, plastic surgery. Uh, a lot of them. Um, what's her? She was uh, Rivers. Um, Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. She kind of. You know, I always liony. think of, and and this shows my age a little bit because I don't think most kids would know who this person is. But I would go Melanie Griffith and Meg Ryan for mm-hmm. because here are two people where it seemed like the pressures that we put on women, especially in mm-hmm. Hollywood, were so great that they felt like they need. You know what I mean? Like they had to do that for their career. And that's weird. Mark McGrath, a little liony. Um, the weird thing about him is that it a uh, little red. Yeah. You, you, I can always tell liony. like. Um, but I mean, but. For his age, looks better than all you know, me and you for oh, sure. You know, yeah, like yeah. you, he's a beautiful man. How's his been, candle ass? May, he may have got that fixed too. Surgery, you don't talk could, about that. You could right? fix everything. Like uh, like Madonna has must have been having the candle ass, and it was melting. And then she was like, "I can't have this." I don't anymore. even think it was that. And then I she think got she literally it. just wanted to be trendy, and she knows that that's what's in now. Isn't as, it like, super sexy. dangerous though? Right? That it can be that, yeah. like Brazilian butt implants. Like that's like people like one out of every five die or something. You it's cut insane. that thigh. Well, uh, don't cut my thigh. Back. Uh-uh. If you bleed go, out to death. No. The irony: if you go to Brazil, that's the most dangerous part of it. Like you know, like the, getting right. it in well, different I don't think countries. Madonna's going to Brazil. For no, it. I know. Yeah, she's got the best surgeons in the world, so it's relatively safe, I would imagine. But that's what I'm saying. Like surgery, you can eliminate all that. Like the the droopy ass, the the body, your face. Like money could solve it. It can. It's just money rules everything around me. <laughs> going through, and then like imagine I start looking a little more and more liony. You're it's seriously kind of imba- considering this, aren't you? What well, are you gonna get done? I don't know. Whatever everybody else does. Like I'll ask. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you ask the puck. Well, you like, need what? the calf implants already. Then my legs, my legs, Dude, get my on. legs are the most you know embarrassing. Do? I saw a picture. I was like, "Oh my god!" You know what you should do? Yeah, you're you a look at something's wrong. No, if you just wear, you just need to wear and one basketball shorts will cover them up. Yeah, if you just wear pants. No, but I want you short want to show shorts. them off. Can I get? Can I get? a uh, you need to get thigh implants. You know my you thighs need to, need to be bigger. My you, thighs are the same size as my leg. Other like they're sticks. Yeah, you know what you need sticks. to get that'll help. It'll help your leg. Wow. Can I get fat injections into my thighs? I want big fat thighs. Big fat thighs. Why don't you get a mondo pecker? <laughs> there is there is quad <laughs> augmentation. How does it work? Uh, I don't know. It's I'll have to qua- look into quad it. Augmentation. <laughs> We do so, have a guest here, though, so oh I think God. we need to go to oh, I bet he's got big thighs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love his thighs. Um, all right, we'll be right back. Welcome back to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. Um, we've I'm got, Dean Ween. <laughs> we've got Dan St. Pierre here from Tuffy's What's Bottle up? Shop and Lounge. Hey, buddy. Long time no see. How you been? How you doing, Dan? Doing well. Doing well. 
Um, so, uh, lots to talk about, uh, and this is why you should, uh, listen to our Twitch, uh, feed because you get all the behind the scenes and in the breaks, mm-hmm. we usually do like mini segments in the breaks. Anyway, um, we were talking about, uh, uh, lots of things. One being the music box, which is obviously the venue at, uh, Tuffy's that's, um, active right now. And you bringing in, uh, you know, artists and musicians. I'm going to talk to yeah. You about a couple of them. I've got a lot of friends that have been telling me about it, which I think is hilarious. I like that when they're like, "Hey, man, have you checked have you out this place?" Out? I was like, no. "Yes, I have." Hey, we we love uh, it. It's been it's been really cool. It was actually our the building itself was there. It became kind of our storage and really sucked. I mean, it just was like you know, kind of the room of like, eh, whatever, throw it back there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So Everybody's so got much, one of those. So much crap back there. But then we got shut down last year, and it just kind of became the project of keeping everybody busy. So we were loving it. I mean, it was so. Now it's open. It opened in January, I think, since the last time I talked to you guys. Yeah, yeah. It's been open, so. We've been doing lots well, of Well, congrats stuff, on that, man. man. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that, you know, that was something that you, you were wanting to do for a while. And for then sure. obviously with natural setbacks, which we all know were going to happen, w- we didn't really account for the huge natural setback, which yeah, is yeah. like a disease yeah. and things that happen that way beyond our control. Yeah. My setbacks would be like, well, we're having trouble getting material for the new bathrooms. You like, know what okay, I was waiting for? Like for you, yeah, yeah. like you going, like, oh, permits in the yeah. city. Yeah, of yeah. course. Because well, that's just what yeah, happens. That's what yeah. happens. Yeah. We know that stuff. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> you got pro wrestling coming up on yes. uh, the 7th um you got yes. molly hatchet coming on yeah. the 18th molly hatchet. i yeah. opened for them with my band tweed <laughs> that's funny and yeah. i went on their bus did you yeah and absolutely remember we were towing the the radio trailer and the guy is like uh, are you guys molly yeah hatchet? we had this old redneck pull up there. he's <laughs> like why would you think molly that? hatchet man i did not realize how big a fan base the molly hatchet is but like in florida like, hold on yeah. testing my memory flirting with disasters flirting that, with disaster that's molly man. hatchet yeah i just know that from like the uh the nascar sony playstation game correct like, yeah. <laughs> i think we grew up together <laughs> apparently <laughs> exactly you know, but uh yeah but man there's like this there's half of florida apparently doesn't mind that uh that molly hatchet doesn't have um original band members in it and then the other half really upset about it yeah no, they're, really? oh my god well they're hatchet like, purists like, like, oh, they are. <laughs> and I, mean, I mean no disrespect when i when i eke into <clears throat> this world but i'm just gonna say something that might be polarizing to people but they are on the skinnered spectrum and i believe they're they're a few rungs lower but very very popular in fact i've seen them twice and every time i see them it's like everybody's dressed in the gear the shirts the whole nine and i'm like i don't see you any other time except for when molly hatchet plays apparently they had a feud with 38 special at one point didn't know about that you know i mean you can wiki that one i don't know interesting (laughs) pull that up sam okay i do (laughs) like both i i'm a i'm a 38 special man so dan i'd like to uh maybe get together for some business um and broker a deal that i think will be very lucrative for both of us um so me and daniel every once in a while Oh, I thought that was just going to be it. <laughs> in the future, we would no, no, like no. to do something good with you. Good set day. Up, set up a time. Every once in a while, and this seems to happen um, like in in spurts, where it's like Ew. the... Uh, Why did you choose that word? <laughs> really? Where it's, it happened with uh, Corey Feldman um, back when he started playing music, and the entire world was like, look at him! And then he was on the Today Show, and everybody was laughing at him. But It, it was, was a better time when we were laughing at Corey. That was right before, I feel like, the bottom fell out. But then it, it <laughs> became, like, obviously super popular, and it was, like, popular to laugh at him. But then some people were, like, almost kind of trolling by being like no i like it you know what i'm saying like and then it became this whole thing yes. where like no you couldn't actually like this and they're like no i do it like and it just became more and more popular than it died out uh but the new thing and and every once in a while daniel will show me something i'm like that's awesome i love this and it's the island boys um on tiktok and oh. it's too <laughs> Um, I guess old teens, I don't know how old oh, they are, man. like when they're in their 20s, early 20s or something. They look like young kids to me, um, but uh, they got to be in their early 20s. They're full of tattoos. They got uh, bleach blonde dreads that stick out. And um, I mean, that's their statement piece, right? Or the, like sideshow side Bob, like minis. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Daniel will play oh, something. I'm an island boy. I'm a just island boy. I'ma just island boy. I'ma get keep that done. Oh, I'ma get stand up sign. I'm just a fool gazing. <laughs> I'm like, who else stand? 
Okay, there's so, a little island boy for you. Obviously, it's horrible. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> like, again, yeah, how but, dare I mean, you? But but I, I don't know. You put it up against <laughs> pretty much anything else that I've heard on popular radio. I'd be like, all right. And okay, there's an good. element right. of like, I'll shake my ass to it. My candle ass. What? Like, <laughs> do the, do these guys uh, are they even aware that it's hard? like? Is there like a diminished? Doesn't matter. Cognitive ability you where like, that is, it is, doesn't like, matter if you're good or bad anymore. Does, does this fall into our like the borderline super low IQ where it, like it goes into hate crime? You know, like, <laughs> like, it's like what <laughs> is it? Or what if they're just trolling you the whole time? It could be that the, the world Remember doesn't Froggy know. Fresh? But for whatever reason, I'm like they're so bad. Throw money at them. Like I want them to it's be super rich. Super catchy. So is it yeah. bad? I would it's say bad. that they have a natural gift for writing a melody. Okay, if I'm gonna give him a compliment, like it is a catchy tune. If DJ Khaled had got his uh, his fingers on it, it'd probably be a hit right now, right? The only reason we hate it is because a it we like, hate the fact that they I look like they're rich and they're fanning out money. And people <laughs> they get mad. I don't care who you are. You do that instantly in the, their subconscious. They're like, I hate you because I'm not you. Yeah, right? but then the people and then they're like, you have no talent, and look how doofy your hair is. This couldn't yeah. be real, and you're having fun, and I'm not having fun because I have kids and a family yeah, and a yeah, job yeah. I hate. As a, we love propping up people that are horrible and giving them money for whatever reason. It's weird. It's like we like give these people money, make them famous. Just as it's kind of like a trolling. You're trolling the world by making. These two people, the famous new, and rich. Uh, they're the new Cash Me Outside. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except for, like, they have some... Man, she got me with her OnlyFans, too. She was like, I'm going to release everything on OnlyFans. I went right there. I was waiting when she it... She got a million so, in damn. a day. Yeah. So, can yeah. we book the Island Boys uh, at, for the music, the music box? box? And then we'll promote it within the... Tom you know, and Dan present... Yeah. I mean, we better act fast because they're booking out Amway, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I see what... Well, like, see, they well, could. As society, we'll... <laughs> Nobody's goes, so, willing to take the risk. Yeah, we'll they we'll we'll laugh at them on t- TikTok and we'll like. Uh, but I think when it comes and this happened with Corey Feldman too. Well, oh, like, Corey Feldman opens for the Island <laughs> Boys, dude. We, when it we wanted to book Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman opens for no one. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. I don't He's think the fair enough all day. But I, I remember there was a time where when this Island was happening, Boy meets Lost Boys. <laughs> Right. Now we're on to it. Now we're on. When, when Corey Feldman was on like today's show and it was hot, God, for that a was second, so uncomfortable, man. Um, we were gonna book him for Hard Rock, and we actually talked to the people, but it was like the price we could like barely what was afford. The price? I forget. It was like it was like seven or nine grand, or something like that. It was something where it was like we could get it together, mm-hmm. but my fear being that. It's only funny for small today for shows. Song. Like, yeah, like, it's, it's only so funny he, for about eighteen seconds, he, and you get your second beer, and you're like, "I'm out of here." Yeah, yeah. Then he, so he's up on stage. So is that is the Island Boys going to be like that? Where they well, get they're going to have to play their song for two hours. You know, like, what are they going to do? Can they actually perform a concert? I don't think no, so, No, right? they can do one song. They can do their song, and they don't even... Re- there's no beat to it. That was some guy who remixed it that I was playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'll probably just get a selfie with them. Could do, like, uh, Sexy Sax Man, like the guy that does the... Uh, uh, he's he's at Will's. He was just at Will's, I think. Oh, yeah. The yeah, guy from no, Lost Boys. No, that was the Lost Boys guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that guy. Or, uh, do, you mean the Sexy Sax Man with the mustache? Yeah, the, that does the... He does... Uh, what's the George Michael song? Uh, Careless Whisper. Careless, yeah. Yes. Oh, my God, but that's you know, I mean, it's one of those. It, it's funny, you know, you can have them walk in, but then it's like, okay, we got we got to move to the next location because it's not funny here anymore. No, or gotta, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm I'm wondering, like, if we book, they're more meet and greet than perform. How much? How many people can fit in the music box? Uh, uh, about five hundred. Wow. Yeah, with the door open and some kind of you know spilling out into the yard. You're you gonna know, want the door do... open. I heard the Island Boys are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> yeah. <saying>. stinky. Like, <laughs> stinky. <laughs> well, they are from the island. Yeah. So. If we sold 500 <laughs> tickets for 20 bucks, uh, $20 yeah, island yeah. ticket, island boy ticket. What is that? 10 grand. Um, so we, uh, we get 10 grand. How much do you think the island boys are for appearance? If they're charging a cameo, 160 bucks, a cameo. That's a re- see based on their cameo price. I say they're reasonable. I feel like you'd have to pay. They could go three hundred all day long, right? Yeah, yeah they, they are. are. So yeah, I mean, I don't know, fifteen hundred bucks in a hotel room, like I. Oh know, really? You I think mean, we can get it for that cheap, I dude? I mean, if we got that, I I'm, I can do that myself. If <laughs> you come to my house and yeah, just yeah. sing it for me in the living room while me and Maisie dance, would people get a? If he just got up there and just did some Island Boys, and then we, me and Dan, just dance around, and then we just no, I will put my hair like, like that. that. I'll, be, yeah. I'll be dancing, and then uh, would everybody be happy, or they feel ripped off? I will. I can't. 
decide. I said I'd never wear it because it's inappropriate. But if Island Boy is in, if we end up doing this, I'll wear my dad's Rasta wig that I still have. We could have him do like just MC the uh, like a. a I don't think they can talk. Like, yeah, well, I mean, they have a vlog <laughs> on YouTube. They can, have one. Yeah, they can barely have them MC. You know, they were on a podcast. I can't one. believe they're alive. My wife became obsessed with it, like, and then she started like researching. She's like, "What is this?" You know, because then she starts to do that thing where you get mad, and then she like was digging into it, and they were on a podcast. I guess we could hear what they have to say. It would hurt my heart though if they're very articulate. I want them to be like really stupid. No, yeah, they are. They are. That's really, it's really bad. Like, Unless I it's mean, an act and they're brilliant, I think yeah. it's really. Like the bar is. You had like, you did have the same conversation about Froggy Fresh before we interviewed him, and we realized he was actually smart, and it was true. all. Yeah, but I don't think this one's gonna go. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying yeah, we yeah. had this exact conversation I, I, about some yeah. other goof situation. You're right. You're right. Blueprint here, though. You're I right. Feel like. Then you, but you know what? It's all the same blueprint usually. You're. Yeah, I think maybe they're. You know, although Froggy Fresh, he could. He never was looking for a rhyme. What makes me think this will go wrong is sometimes these guys go. I mean, then. And at the sun, find my. Yeah. <laughs> and when you do that, yeah. and when you oh, yeah. just trail off, I kind of feel like you're dumb, right? You're dumb because you didn't you didn't, you didn't even try. You could have said sun with with the sun and sun, sun, the bun. You could have just said bun, <laughs> con, lun. You could have run. You could have done anything there. Just make a noise. But you're they're not good enough. <laughs> like it's just, uh, I mean, straight up. Internet uh, sideshow. I think right? that's what all this. When is, I right? look at them, Internet I think sideshow. I think that the reason there are two of them is to remind them that they're alive. <laughs> that's how dumb I think. <laughs> are they, they are twin maybe. brothers or something? Yeah, yeah they, they are, are twin. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That's why I think there's two of them because he look. Oh, I'm. Oh, uh, oh that's me. Right. I, I think, think it's like a. They said they're Cuban. I hope they have a real man Cuban uh, father. <laughs> they, were raised, they were raised by a single mother. Oh, oh. that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, see it. you so. almost were an island boy, John. <laughs> <laughs> he is an island it's boy. It's something. Um, you are those guys just damn. without the haircut. So now that uh, Tuffy's is a music venue uh, because of the music box, have you ever had an experience where you booked an artist and the people that paid the tickets or came to see, like the artist was like, <laughs> like people were like, I want a refund, like or something like that. Like <laughs> this person was so bad because that happens every once in a while. Like you'll it catch does. an artist, like maybe he took one too many pain pills that day or whatever, <laughs> and he's on stage slobbering. And then the the people that paid are oh, mad and they man. want a refund from the venue. And then the artist is like, No, it's in my contract. It is what it is. I got on stage. As long as I get on stage. And this is what it's like for a lot of entertainers. Like, as long as they're on stage, you cannot judge their quality of their act and have yeah, anything to the do performance with performance is not guaranteed. The Ex quality of performance, yeah, yeah. No, we, we have. I mean, not a thankfully not a paid show. We haven't had a ticketed show, but I did have one guy playing for free, not too long ago. That oh, I, no. I think you know we had an opener for him, and then he came up, and I don't know if he was. I mean. Took a handful of pills or something, but geez, I mean, this guy was like, God, do I need to like prop him up with something? Like <laughs> no, they're falling asleep yeah, on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. He's like basically snoring into the mic. Oh, going, like, oh, oh man. Oh, yeah, that's Harold. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, a real yeah. sad. Do you know the song you're playing, sir? Oh, know? man. Yeah. I was like, how are you not more like, isn't <laughs> yeah. your adrenaline pumping that people are watching you? No, you, but it's how totally you, that you're warm inside. <laughs> yeah. How are you so high on heroin that you're falling asleep while everybody's watching yeah. you're playing? Yeah. No one like, wanted to leave, though. We had to watch. I mean, it was just kind of like, I mean, we were like, we're going to watch this guy. I mean, he might fall off the stage. I mean, Oh, but then it takes a turn, though, when you start to see, like, when he turns gray or blue, then you're just, you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, we got to leave. I feel like an accomplice here. So, oh, man. Dan, we also talked a little cameo, and you said... Uh, Who's little cameo? Is that what you <laughs> call me behind my back? <laughs> you mother... You, you mentioned uh, that you got a cameo from Dean Ween, and it was to uh, basically uh, tell your fantasy baseball team that uh, or your league that you are no longer participating, which I feel like a lot of people use cameos for joke, bad news, like bad news or joke news with their fantasy leagues or some sort of like punishment for your fantasy. Like they're used more as jokes or like uh, to make your friends laugh than anything else. Um, is there a person in the world who every morning gets up and starts their day by watching their cameo that somebody gave them? Hmm. I'm I sure there's at least there's one. There's got to be someone. If you're like a massive fan of someone, like they said your name. It's the only, we live in, a, in the only day and age where you could have access to like super famous celebrities and they'll 
talk to you personally for the a, super for a fee. Right? On there, yeah. though. They'll this... say your name and say happy birthday to you for a fee, yeah. and yeah. like, and not even that much. It's like 150 bucks or whatever. Yeah. Like, they, you'll get the celebrity the... you idolized your whole life. Who's to the most happy. famous person on Cameo and the most expensive? Do we know? You, they, you there's can do the, the former president of Mexico, I think, and and I've definitely seen Brett Favre because we were going to do that for my mom for What's Christmas. That guy's name? Hope my mom's not yeah, Brett Favre was famous. I mean, Vicente, Vic, yeah, Fox, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's been celebrities that have done small promotions with cameo. I Guess think, how and, much Mike Tyson's cameo is okay that's super famous though that, yeah okay that man that's Dude, like that's top tier if you if you are if you grew up around our time and you watch mike tyson be the the yeah. scariest man in the world and the like Even the now, heavyweight he's, champion he's yeah i mean and then with his movie roles bucks. way more than that oh way more 10 10k Way more than that. Whoa. What? 10k twenty thousand dollars for one video for mike tyson well, you wow. are getting the lisp. You're getting the iconic voice. The, yeah, it's I mean, yeah. yeah. <sighs> it's that's a hard, That's a hard pill to swallow. It's overpriced. Yeah. Has anybody done it? Are there any reviews? On there? Uh, there are reviews. Yeah, great cameo. Could not ask for more. Honest wow. and genuine. Honest like, and genuine. So there's forty grand right there. For, My for, God, <laughs> twenty grand. You better be honest and Good genuine. Good lord. It, or if you're a millionaire, uh, really not much to you. It's no, like, you yeah. know, two hundred bucks to us is like uh, twenty grand to a, a multimillionaire. You know, so it's not you know that much. Even though I wouldn't spend two hundred bucks on a camera. I guess we would for we spent some forty show. on Chum Lee from Palm Stars. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, back to Dean Ween. Um, <laughs> so no one has ever said that. Dean Ween alert. Um, I and we brought up the fact that it's like, all right, he played in the band Ween, and his first name was Dean, is Dean Ween. <laughs> and I grew up thinking that that's what you did based on my friends from Miami's bands. Everybody was their first name and the band they played in, and that's how everybody would uh, like Klaus Agency or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, yeah. Agency, Mike who, Agency, who now yeah. well, I still call him Mike Agency, even though that's not his real last. I don't even know his last name. It's true, you do call him that. But he plays drums in the Avid Brothers. Yeah. And I just and know Tony Rage played in Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> That's Did it. He? Uh, That's why I would call him that, right? I don't know where Rage came from. I think it's just because he, he thought it, when he was a young Venezuelan he, metal boy, he thought yeah. that that sounded like and aggro. Like, and the, uh, probably like uh, he's like, oh, those, these white people in radio will like this. They you know they won't understand Tony Rage, Rodriguez, Johnny uh, Cage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so and Samantha says like, no, that uh, like you know people don't do that. Like, yeah, I didn't say people don't do that. You said I thought that's what everyone does, and oh, I, yeah. that's a ridiculous statement. Okay, well I thought. That that was the accepted norm uh, in the music industry is first name band you played with. Um, have you found that to be true uh, with other bands like that you book? It, is everybody in Molly Hatchet, Billy Hatchet? We've <laughs> 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 got the Hatchets. Did you see how ridiculous all, your all, question is? All right, it's stupid. I tried to bail. I tried to bail, but I kept going. What's awesome <laughs> is, is having Tom walk all the way back. <laughs> To his own joke, holding I Billy Hatchet in his hand. <laughs> and he looks at it, he looks at us, and he looks at Billy Hatchet, and looks at us, and he's like, it's all I got. I mean, and, literally, like, yeah. and you know what? You powered through that. I respect that. I literally loud, think of too. any band and then look at their names. Billy Hatchet's a lyric. <laughs> <laughs> it's Billy Hatchet. Yeah. Right, oh, anyway. my God. Uh, That's but, hilarious. Uh, but no. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's fine. That's fine. That's you didn't have an answer. That's fine. <laughs> so, have you noticed as you've gotten older, you've got a candle ass? <laughs> <laughs> That's the has other question. Has yours melted? It's, it's falling, man. Yeah, yeah it's falling. Yeah, yeah. Women's asses don't seem to fall as as fast though. Do a lot I, more squatting over toilets. Uh, well, women carry their weight in their lower regions usually more. Oh, right. Like it, it's <laughs> not like me. A, well, it's like I see yes, more. True. Sam's like way high. Well, I see more men with tiny stick legs like I have than women. That's all I'm saying. True. Mm. Like, that is true. Like I, a lot of I, men develop the no fat on their legs, tiny stick legs that look deformed yeah. more than I see women walking around with. Uh, and but I see women like more with gigantic legs yeah. like huge Chongo. and i'm like Chongos. wow and then a smaller upper body i was like how did your ass and legs get so sometimes big? i see women whose legs uh are so large that in the center <laughs> where it, they're almost like connected it's almost like you don't even you have one leg it's like your jumbo sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> sorry dan um let's talk music box so <laughs> right. rep, pro wrestling action <laughs> has got <laughs> pro no. wrestling action <laughs> is coming <laughs> to no. the music box i'm gordon Soler. november 7th what what is that 
Uh, well, it's wrestling. Um, they we had a guy. Uh, he's done it. This will be the fourth time he's done it. But yeah, I mean, he's put together this whole group. Nice. He works with a lot of young, up and coming wrestlers. A lot of them work here just at the Full Sail Wrestling School and all that. I mean, yeah, yeah. They fully, I mean, they're committed, man. I mean, it's a good show. It's a lot of fun. I mean, they, they uh, sometimes you show. get like, I, I sometimes do they I, try harder they than try I think harder. they do. When I saw amateur wrestling one time, uh, we added it at our event for our 90s deal down downtown, and it was amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think some of those guys are with this group, by the way. Yeah. And it seems like the amateur wrestlers that are trying to come up, like, they will try their hardest mm-hmm. and put on the best. Like, I, I was impressed. They kind of have like, to, right? You want to make your mark, you want to. And it doesn't even matter who's watching, too, which is odd, because I've I've always said this, like, you know... Uh, an comedians acoustic, do this, too. Like, an acoustic guitar player, comedians, or, like, you get booked for something, you go, and then, you know, slow night, is raining, whatever, there's <laughs> nobody in the bar, they're still playing Santeria, oh, loud, right. yeah. singing, the, and I'm like, why are your tracks on? No one's even watching. Like, yeah. And uh, for some reason, that... Uh, Probably bog- to get paid. Boggles my... Yeah, no, sure. <laughs> yeah. And it's, like, it's a good way to... I don't want to, Dan coming over and, like, you're just standing there. It's like, nobody's listening, Dan. <laughs> I just had to get on stage. Yeah, That's yeah, part yeah. of my contract. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But these wrestlers, like, like you would think if no one's watching that you wouldn't take the bump so hard or you wouldn't, you know, because then, like it's dangerous to somebody you injure yourself, but they still go full bore yeah, and as hard on, as if yeah. there was a million people watching. And uh, I'm impressed by that, that you try that hard. And some of the gimmicks they can get away with are a little more fun. You know, like when wrestling does get to a point where it's, it's super corporate, then you kind of lose... You know, some of the, you know, the, the, just the, the freedom of it, you know, yeah, the yeah. Con- sometimes, sometimes the concepts can be wackier and independent and it makes for funnier and more fun wrestling, you know? So I like it when you see that. And a lot of times these guys that are independent wrestlers can control their own gimmick, which inherently is what makes it more creative. So, um, Tuffy's Bottle Shop and Lounge, obviously the music box, uh, all the stuff, like all the performers that are coming up are on the website, right? Uh, you can yeah. get tickets. Yeah, I mean, on our on our website, we also have uh, an event, a big um, festival coming up uh, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, Rustin Rebel, which formerly was uh, Folk Yeah, which was held at Wills every year. Oh, nice! Um, but now that they lost that parking lot, they kind of had to, they lost their venue. So uh, right. drive by truckers, yeah, we've got Cat Ridgeway, oh, yeah, drive yeah. by truckers. Yeah, Pat- I love Patterson drive by Hood. truckers. Patterson Hood of drive by truckers is coming through um, on that bill. Uh, there'll be 10 bands and then each band is picking a couple of Tom Petty songs and after we're doing like a big Tom Petty all-star tribute sweet it's really awesome. cool it's gonna be fun a little love for the Florida guys yeah, I love right. it very cool man get yeah. yourself a Florida beer while you're listening to some Florida music that's and right. I want to apologize for leaving but- Butler's cut out uh, at Tuffy's for so long I know I still see <laughs> pictures of oh, him I apologize for leaving Butler's butt out what is this butt out Butler's stand up cardboard cut out I still see people like ah look at their Oh, kissing him oh, or humping him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, man. Yeah, it got defiled a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I saw there's a hole in it now. <laughs> I said I was only going to leave it yeah, there for two weeks. That. It's been almost a year now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sorry about that. Um, Tuffy's Bottle Shop and Lounge. Yes, Check sir. out all the Accent Music Box, and we will see you tomorrow. All right.